No, I ain't, I ain't gonna let you go to school. Mm-hmm. It ain't about letting. Queens asked you four and fourteen. You read little muffin. Mm-hmm. You said because well, it's little muffin birthday, so we ain't talking. We talking little muffin. Shoot, shoot. I ain't talking to you. I really good shit. No, you will not. No, you're not. See, you read little muffin. Little muffin says you read. <laughs> he said, for out of the prison he come to reign, whereas also he that is born in his kingdom become poor. What you get from that, Jim Dan? What you get from that? He said, out of his prison, he coming to rank. There you go. And then he say that he that is born in his kingdom become poor. So the reason what we got to look at is, is we're going to have to come up out of that same prison. See, because what was uh, he talking about him coming out of the grave, right? But for us to be able to come and reign with him, what we're going to have to do? We're going to have to come out of prison too. And then we're going to have to become a prisoner of the Lord. What do you say? See, but let's look and see, make sure when he come up out of prison that he don't rain. Let's look at Luke 1 and 26 real fast. I mean 31. Matter of fact, hold that. Luke 1 and 31. Romans 2 is what comes in. Romans 1 and 1 is what comes in. How many of y'all want to rain? And look at the key thing that he mentioned. And he saying he that become a part of his kingdom got to become poor. What does it, because we just went over that about a month or so ago. What did that bring to mind? That second part of that verse. Anything come to mind for y'all in that second part of that verse? What come to mind to you? Let me go back into it and look at it one more time. Look what he said now. He said, he that is born in his kingdom become poor. What you get from that, Lamar? He that is born in his kingdom, he got to become poor. You get anything from it? Huh? No. What about you, Jim Dandy? That too, I give you that one there too. That's a good one. Wasn't what we were looking for, but it's just as good. Look at him. Get Jim down there around the applause. Let's get, get Jim down there around the applause. Let's get Jim down there around the applause. He just said you got to become poor and you got to become humble or poor in spirit. So we're going to give Jim down there. That wasn't what we were looking for, but that's a good answer. What we on? Like on Family Feud? Good answer. You know what I'm talking about? There we go. You said so. Romans 1 and 1. It says, Paul, a servant of y'all, sure the Messiah, called to be an apostle, separated unto the gospel of God. This is what y'all need to look at. This second part of this verse. See, right now, this man is calling y'all to be separated unto the gospel of the living God. Hold this and look at Exodus 32. Because this is what just come to my mind. Mm-hmm. How many of y'all feel like y'all have been separated unto the gospel of God? You think this man done called you for the opportunity to save your soul? Just to do it. Look at verse 26. It said, Then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, Who is on Yah's side? Let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves together unto him. Go ahead. And remember what Levi means, right? That means to be joined. So if you join to God, ain't you separated? See, that you got to be looking at, as Paul wrote, I think, in 1 Corinthians 1. He's talking about sanctified and called to be saints. So if you're going to be separated unto the gospel of God, you've got to sit back and look and say, okay, who on your side? You need to come unto me. And we know Moses is a prophet like unto the Lord, right? So if you're going to be separated unto God, then you've got to be able to say, if you own your sure side, you need to come unto him. And whatever it is that's hindering you from being completely separated unto the gospel, you need to cast it away from him. You need to cast it away. You need to look at that. Just like how the Lord mentioned that you can't put old wine in new bottles. You need to look at that. If you're going to separate yourself under the gospel of God, go ahead and consecrate yourself and separate yourself so you can be just like what's mentioned right here that Levi named me. You can be joined to y'all. Matter of fact, look at 1 Corinthians 6 while we have it. We're getting along with one of And for you to be able to be separated under the gospel of God, what you're going to have to do? For you to become a, be able to reign, you're going to have to come up out of that prison. This means you're going to have to come up out of sin. You're going to have to come up out of that carnal mind state and, and fleshly matters. And you're going to have to start thinking according to the spirit, thinking according to the word, and let that dictate every thought, action, and doing that you do. First Corinthians about what I said, 1 and 2. Well, I said verse 6, but look at 1 and 1. Chapter 6 is what I actually said. But he took me straight to 1 and 1. So we'll go there. Say, Paul called to be an apostle of Yahshua the Messiah through the will of God, and Sophonies our brother, unto the church of God which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified in the Messiah Yahshua, called to be saints. 
within all that in every place. Call upon the name of Yahshua the Messiah, our Lord, both bears and all. And this is the key thing. If you're going to be set apart by Yahshua, what's the first element you need to have? Remember, he told you that we'll receive inheritance by the sanctification of faith that's in him. Because don't that mean if, you gotta, if you're going to be in his kingdom, don't that mean you have to be set apart by him? Remember, he said he that sanctified and he that sanctified all of one. And for this cause, he's not ashamed to call you brethren. And that this sanctification perfected you once and for all. So you need to sit here and look at this here. As the Lord see fit each and every week to keep us alive to hear this here, what that means? We separated unto the gospel by the will of God. That means this is God's will that we get the opportunity to hear this word. You know what I'm talking about? So when we get an opportunity to hear this man's word, all the plan, all the half stepping, go ahead and cut it short. Now, one of the brethren earlier, very let it be known, Lord been whooping it behind for things that he's been doing. Now, if he want to be specific and mention it to y'all, that's on him. You know what I'm talking about? But he let it be known, Lord whooping it behind for certain things he's doing. Some of y'all probably getting whooped by the Lord, you just don't want to tell it. You know what I'm talking about? He's tapping you right across your chin, and you ain't even got tired of getting tapped. You know what happened to them dudes in, in, in MMA when they get tired of getting put in that in that fence? But what they do? What? You ever seen a boxer throw in the towel? Well, that's the worst thing a boxer ever want to do is throw in the towel. Nigga just beating him unmercifully. Like I said, I don't want no more. Some of y'all, the Lord be put beating on y'all. Y'all still won't throw up the white flag and say, I don't want no more. If you're going to be separated unto the word, then do that. Because he that called us is Kodesh. He said, I'm Kodesh, you be Kodesh. I'm set apart, you be set apart. I'm holy, you hold. Matter of fact, hold that. Look at what Peter tell you in First Peter one, since it's on the mind. Cause that's the only way you're gonna be able to be able to be, come up out of your prison to be able to run. You got to be willing to be separated. First Peter one and thirteen. He said, "Wherefore gird up the loins of your mind." We mentioned that before. That means you need to tighten up. You need to get your mind clear. You need to be dead focused. Be sober, hope to the end of the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Yahshua the Messiah. As obedient children, not fastening yourselves according to the form of lust in your ignorance. See, that's the only thing. That'd be the problem. And see, we, we didn't know at one time the things that we were doing were wrong. But yet we still want to go back and fashion ourselves according to those things that we were doing when we didn't know no better. Now you see the sweat. Yeah, he told us you ain't you ain't did that. You got to sweat a pit like a mug. I mean, all of you said because I'm hot. Yeah, yeah. Stink, nigga. No, I smell yeah. like speed stick. Yeah, whatever. Yeah, you need to make sure you cut on some air here because I'm sweating like a fool. Huh? Take that. Yeah, I didn't say nothing about cutting on no AC. I just said cut on some air. What is that? No, it's never it never hurts to grab a fan before, did it? What is that? Come out of band. Band yeah. circulates air. No, no, no. Don't try to, you try to make it seem like what you were saying. Right? No, you said it wrong. You said air. Which means AC. Well, no, I said, look, my what do we always do? Don't we always cut the fan on? So wouldn't that what I be referring to because of previous no. pattern of behavior? No, you said air. That's air for me. It gets yeah. the job done. I don't got to have no good. No. Just give me a good, strong fan. I had a fan from Kmart that was about this big around, and it blew snowball. I love that thing. You hear me? But I just want y'all to look at that. He said you don't need to fashion yourselves according to your form of love. So if you still going after stuff or desiring things that you know you shouldn't be desiring when you didn't know no better, and you still fashioning your mind after that, there's no way in the world you're going to be separated under God, and there's no way in the world you're going to be able to come out of that prison to reign with this man. And there's no way you're going to be able to make yourself poor to be able to dwell in this man's kingdom. You need to sit there and you need to assess that stuff. Why am I desiring the things that I know are wrong now that I've been made aware that they're wrong? You know what that's a hallmark of? What do you think that's a hallmark of? A dummy. You know what I'm talking about? That means you just a straight up dummy. You know what I'm talking about? Somebody need to tell it to you like that. I know sometimes people don't want nobody to get to you that blunt. But if you sitting there desiring after stuff that you knew was, that now you know is wrong, that's why this man say, do not fashion yourself according to your the form of lust when you didn't know no better. I could understand when you didn't know no better, but now y'all know better and you still desiring stuff you know you shouldn't be fooling with. You need to assess that. You really need to weigh that. 
and ask yourself, am I really pleasing God right now? Am I truly separated unto the gospel? Because the man, because Isaiah told you, who have been You wouldn't do it. Verse uh, 15. He said, but as he which have called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. All manner of your behavior need to be set apart according to this word. If you're going to sit here and say, I'm separated unto the gospel. Because it's written, be ye holy, for I am holy. Come on back over here to 1 Corinthians 1. Need to weigh that and consider that in your mind. You need to sit back on just what we read in the law. Who is on your side? He said, let him come on unto me. If you're going to be on your side, the man just told you, he set apart, you need to be set apart. Look at it. We're in verse 3 of 1 Corinthians 1. He said, Grace be unto you in peace from God our Father and from the Lord Yahshua the Messiah. And that's the same for y'all. Grace be unto you. May God's favor be unto you. May the peace of God rest unto you. And that's coming straight from your Father and from your, and from your Lord. He said, I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God which is given you by Yahshua the Messiah. That in everything you are enriched by him in all utterance and all knowledge. See, now he said how he said he made himself poor. Remember we dealt with this a while back about he made himself poor that we could be rich. So he said there's a man that have great riches yet have nothing. But there's a man who maketh himself poor yet have great riches. See, that's why you need to make yourself. That was the second half. But what you said, that was good though. Not taking away from that. We might can work that in a different fashion. That wasn't what we were looking for. But now you done got my mind far to take it two different directions. You know what I'm talking about? Because to make yourself poor, you need to be poor in the world and rich in faith. And for some of y'all, that's y'all issue. You don't trust God. Y'all trust him to a certain extent. You know what I'm talking about? But see, what did Paul tell you? He said, we walk by what? He said, and not sight. Sometimes you're not going to be able to see what the Lord is going to work on your behalf. But you need to know what is it. What the Lord say he do? So he said he keep covenant with mercy with thousands of them that love him and keep his commandments. So if he keep up his end, if you keep your end of the bargain up, don't you think the Lord going to keep up his? Because then, cause why? Because you on your side, are you not? You done separated yourself by the word. That's why the Lord came back in John 17, 17, and what did he say? Set them apart by thy truth. Set them apart by thy law. Set them apart by me. Because y'all sure said, I set myself apart by the word. So I set myself apart by the gospel, but they might set themselves apart by the gospel. Y'all need to do the same so you can come out of prison. You know what I'm talking about? So you can be able to reign with it. We're going to get to that part with them reigning with it. Just give me a minute. Look what else we say right here. He said, even as the testimony of the Messiah was confirmed in you. See, this is the whole point of how the, how's the testimony of the Messiah going to be confirmed in you. You know what it means to confirm something like that. You mean to make it sure. Make sure it's correct. You know what I'm saying? Everything's good. Well, if the testimony of the Messiah is going to be confirmed in you, then what that means? You're going to be living his word, are you not? That's how the testimony of the Messiah is going to be confirmed in you. And I ain't talking about I'm obeying two, three days out of the week. I'm talking about consistently applying obedience to the man's word. Day in, day out. Now, I respect the two of the individuals, and I ain't going to call them by name unless they choose at this exact moment in time to acknowledge that they've been doing stuff they ain't got no business. But I respect the fact that they may mention, okay, I've been doing this here, I've been doing that there. So you know what that tells me? Tighten up. That's all I can tell you. It's tighten up. If you know you're in violation, you know you're in error, tighten up. Do what you got to do. Cut short what you got to cut short. Remove what you got to remove. Because y'all life is on the line. And truth be told, we have no desire for any of y'all to perish. And like oh, I told you about this here, he pooping? No. Again? Yeah. Good grief. You want him back in the house. Exile. Exile. You know what I'm talking about? So we mention all this here for one reason and one reason alone. I know I can be a hard man to deal with. You know what I'm talking about? And I know I can be very hard. But I say I'm hard on y'all because I love you. You know what I'm talking about? I know it. I know I can be a hard man to deal with, but it's a purpose of for your soul to be saved. Because I know like this here, man, it don't make no sense to get the opportunity. All of them sat and heard word from many different people who had no idea what in the world they were talking about. And now this man done sat, saw fit for us to get an opportunity to hear. 
No need for procrastinating. No need for hesitating. No need for, for trying to live a double life. And no need for lying, lying to ourselves, making ourselves think that we done put away things that we know we ain't put away or that we done overcame things that we know we ain't overcame. You're going to have to be real with yourself. And if you know it's stuff you ain't got no business, if you know it's stuff that's resting in your heart, get it from up out of there. I know this man didn't have me tell y'all this numerous weeks over the last couple months. He's telling y'all this for a reason because he knows your heart is not right with him. Your heart is not right with him. Don't be like the people in the wilderness now. Let's go on over here and look at all that 1 Corinthians 6 about separating yourself under the Lord. We get that a little longer ago. Oh, that's great. And then something else just came to my mind. Now, he's a pooper. He's a pooper. Verse 16. And make it 15. Look what he says. He said, Know ye not that your bodies are the members of the Messiah. Shall I then take the members of the Messiah and make them the members of a harlot? God forbid. What? Know ye not that he which is joined to a harlot is one body, saith he, shall be one, for two, saith he, shall be one flesh. But he that is joined to the Lord is one spirit. That's going back to what we looked at in the law. Now I want y'all to come over here to 2 Chronicles 31, about verse 18. And look what it's in the text. Because if you're going to separate yourself unto the Lord, you want to become one with him. Well, you can't be no sinner and try to be joined to him. It's going right back to what we were talking about, that, that many of y'all are ready to be baptized. But have you considered what it is you're getting yourself into? Are you considering what it is that you're joining yourself to? You need to be cognizant and aware of every single solitary thing that you're doing. Don't take things that matter lightly. Second Chronicles 31 and 18. See, look what it says. And he said, to the genealogy of all their little ones, their wives and their sons and their daughters through all the congregation, for in their set office they sanctify themselves in holiness. Now, see, he's talking about the Levite priest, but we came here for a reason. This man said they took the whole genealogy, say the children, the wives, everybody in the body, they set themselves apart in holiness. Now, if you're going to be separated unto the gospel, that's what you're going to be doing. You're going to be separating yourself in the codestness or the set-apartness of the living God. See, everybody wants a spirit, but you don't know. Whether these people say Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, or Ruach HaKodesh, that's the spirit, set-apart spirit. So if you want this man set apart spirit, then you need to set yourself apart. This all this is dealing with going right back to what we just seen when Paul was mentioned, talking about I'm separated unto the gospel. If you're going to be separated unto the gospel, let's see what Hezekiah did. He said, also the sons of Aaron the priest, which were in the fields and the suburbs of the city, and every several city, the men were, that were expressed by name to give portion to all the males among the priests, and to all that were reckoned by genealogies among the Levites, and thus, did Hezekiah throughout all Judah, and wrought that which was good and right and true before Yah his God. And see, this is the whole key thing. If you're going to be set apart according to the gospel, you need to work what's good and right and true before Yah. Not what's good and right and true before you. Not what you think is good. Not what you think is right. But what, and not what you think is the truth. But what God said. Look at Proverbs 14 and 12, just so you know it. Just so you know it. We come back over here to Romans 1 after this Proverbs 14 12. Give me a second. Get the other thing right by. Get on back my mind. Proverbs 14 and 12. This is what this man from the table. He said, There's a way which seem right unto a man, and the end thereof are the ways of death. You can think what you're doing right, and you can think what you're doing good. And you can think what you're doing is the truth, but you're going to go to hell. Because we say, what did he just say about Hezekiah's wife? What did he say about Hezekiah? He did what was what? Good, right? Mm -hmm. and, did, and did what was right. And he did it in truth. What did the Lord tell you in John 4? told you the same thing. Because we know the law is good. And what Paul wrote in Romans 7, he said it's just good and set apart. That's what he said. And we know that it's right and it's good and it's the truth. So he's sitting there telling you, Yahshua came right back and told you in John 4. As a matter of fact, let's look at John 4 before we even get to Romans 1. We get back to Romans 1, Lord, from this. John 4 and 20. John 4 and 20. 
John 4 and 20. He said, Our fathers worship in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Yahshua said unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour will come when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet Jerusalem worship the Father. If any of y'all ever heard somebody tell you you couldn't keep the feed day because we, we ain't in Jerusalem, the man just sat there and crashed that just then. He just crashed it just then. Because he said, that woman just said, Our fathers say that's where we're supposed to come worship at, right? And where we're supposed to came up them three times a year. To Jerusalem, right? But what did, this, what did the Lord just say? He said, you're not neither in this mountain nor at Jerusalem going to worship the Father. Ain't that what he just told him? Because he know we were going to be scattered out. He already know this. He said, you worship, you know not what. We know what we worship for salvation is other Jews. Y'all need to sit there and consider that. Because I know a lot of times y'all want to tell people about stuff, and some of y'all don't even know what you worship yet. He said, salvation is for a Jew. Jew circumcised in heart. Jew done cast away the foreskin of his heart. He done cast that sin away. A lot of y'all ain't cast y'all foreskin away. So you really don't know what you're worshiping. And you really ain't, ain't got it as he like to use. Like, so we, we, we say amped up down here. You know what I'm talking about? But you don't really need to be getting souped up by stuff. And you ain't even worshiping correctly. You need to sit down and look at that. Because if you're not worshiping correctly, that means you ain't separated under God. gospel. Wouldn't you say that? Huh? Which means you don't know what you're worshiping doing. Because you're thinking what you're doing is right, and you're going to go die, and you're going to go to hell. That means you ain't came out your prison, have you? Which means you're not going to reign with See, even Lil Muffin say, you ain't going to do it. You heard her, she hit the, eh, that ain't even going to happen. See, they be on cue. That's two weeks in a row. I thank the Lord for that. That's two weeks in a row. Look what he say right here. He say, but the hour will come, and now is, when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for the Father seeks such to worship. Why do you think he blessed Hezekiah the way he did? Hezekiah saw him in spirit and truth, didn't he? Because we just read that right out of the scriptures, didn't it? He said he did everything that was good and right and in truth with well, Yah is God. Because it said Hezekiah's heart was perfect with God. It said his heart was perfect with it. You got to ask yourself, how many of y'all feel like your heart perfect with God? Or as Paul said, my conscience is void of offense towards God and man. If you know your conscience is not void of offense, you need to sit your butt down somewhere. I done told some of y'all this before, and I'm going to tell you again. If you know you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing, just keep your mouth closed. Because all you're going to be doing is giving people an opportunity to run their mouth. And I was mentioning to you earlier about people trying on certain things when it comes to the word. I want y'all to know this thing I told you before. They don't have a personal problem with you. They have a problem with God. You were aware of that, right? You know that too, though. I want y'all to know that. I know sometimes it can seem like, man, these people be trying me. They don't like me. This, that, then, the other. It ain't got nothing to do with you. Because look here, I'm not going to sit here and lie to y'all. Don't nobody want nobody disrespecting them. Don't nobody want nobody talking about them. Don't nobody want them doing this or doing that. But when it comes down to you professing, I live this particular way. And then what I'm going to do, they're going to come. But just always remember, they hate God. They don't hate you. Because if you're going to be separated unto the gospel, what did the Lord tell his disciples? He did what? He chose them out of the world, right? Which means they separated under the gospel. He's saying that the world hates you. No, it hated me first because I testify that that is evil. I ain't saying it's great. I ain't saying you're going to like it. You know what I'm talking about? But just always keep it in mind. They just hate the Lord, which means they hate the Father. Y'all hear me? Y'all hear me on that? They keep that in mind because you like when people talk about you. I mean, I mean, you can sit here and say, you know, people say they don't care. I don't say, but guess what? After a while, it's going to grate on you. Ain't nobody going to sit here and be like, yeah, I love when people talk bad about me. I love when people ridicule me. I love when people call me names and speak all manner of evil about me. Don't nobody like that. You might not personally care, but see, you ain't probably had it came at you no full throttle. I mean, I care. I mean, like, I don't like it, but at the same time, I don't care. Yeah, I mean, I know what you meant. I just had to get more specific. Because I know at the same time, nobody don't like it. But at this point, you get to the point of school. Niggas been calling me crazy since I was about 16, 15 at the earliest. You know what I'm talking about? Because I've been on some different type of time for a long time. If Pear was on the line, he could bear with me for it. Niggas been calling me crazy. You know what I'm talking about? So I done got to the point where I've been dealing with it for so long, it don't bother me. You know what I'm talking about? But at the same time, I don't like it. You know what I'm saying? Remember when I was working at that job, that lady was messing with me all the time about all type of asinine things. You know what I'm saying? I didn't like it, but it was what it was. But the reason why I mentioned that there is, at all means, when people disrespect y'all, when people do evil things to y'all, don't do nothing about it. 
As a matter of fact, since I just mentioned that, let me finish this out and I'll show you what I'm talking about. He said, for God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and truth. Hezekiah was showing you forth what the Lord was talking about right there, was he not? Y'all need to know that if you're going to worship this man, if you're going to serve this man, do it in spirit and do it in truth. As John told us, let us not serve this man with mouth, but in deed and in truth. Because guess what? I had a homegirl of mine. She know me now. She know me since I was 17. This was probably about 2011, maybe 2010. She ain't seen me in a good long time. And she told me, oh, I know you live in it. I said, well, how do you know that? She said, I can tell by how you post it. I said, well, what you mean by that? All her response is, I know you. You know what I'm talking about? But I'm going to sit here and tell her, just because y'all post stuff on Facebook about certain things, that don't mean nothing. And y'all need to be cognizant of what you post because that's shipping people a window of what's in your heart. You know what I'm talking about? It's giving the people a window. Because what did the Lord say? Abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. So guess what? The abundance of your heart, you hit sin. You hit shell. You know what I'm talking about? You hit post. You need, to, you need to be cognizant of that. Some things y'all need to keep to yourself. Some things people don't need to know. You don't need to share every single solitary thought or emotion coming in your mind to these people out here. Because these people watching y'all now. Please know the people watching y'all. They be careful what you share and what you mention. You know what I'm talking about? Look at the little muffin. Why the muffin looking at you like that? Oh, yeah. I mean, that's just with all manners. It ain't no what. Y'all just got to be careful what you post. Be careful what you listen to, because you already know on Facebook, people see everything that you're doing. They see what you like. They see what you comment on. You know what I'm talking about? Y'all be careful what you're doing now. Well, I'll mention before that. I don't forgot. It don't make no difference. Let's go over here and look at this uh, Romans 1. I'll get back to what I was talking about, about people dealing with your own persecution tip in a minute, on how you deal with them in a minute. But Romans 1 and 1. We start right back. Romans 1 and 1. He said, Paul, a servant of Yahshua the Messiah, called to be an apostle separated unto the gospel of God, which he had promised before by his prophets in the Holy Scriptures. So he didn't already promise us the Lord in the Scriptures. We know that, right? He didn't already promise us to separate us by the word. We know this. He said, concerning his son, Yahshua the Messiah, our Lord, which was made of the seed of David according to the flesh, and declared to be the Son of God with power, according to the spirit of codestinus, of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead. Because what did it say? He said he that come out of prison, he come to reign. So if he coming out about that grave with power by the set apart spirit, then you got to sit down and look at this here. Because what did he tell you? Look at First Timothy 2. It might be 2 Timothy 2 if my memory is certain. Right. It's 2 Timothy 2. And it's verse 11. We all bring this here because if you want to come about his prison so you can reign with him, that means you need to come about of death. And dwelling in death is dwelling in sin. Because we know Yahshua made, made himself a curse to take away the curse. He redeemed us from the curse by being made a curse. He took away sin and death. He died to take away sin and death because this is what had us in bondage. And he went into prison and he took on all these forms of this captivity on himself to remove it from us. And we need to look at that. Verse 11 of 2 Timothy 2 and 11. He said it is a faithful saying, if we be dead with him, we shall also live with him. So it said the king came up out of prison so he can reign, right? And those that are born in his kingdom, they made themselves poor. He said if we suffer, we shall also reign with him. That's the whole key thing. So for him to come up out of prison, didn't he suffer? This is the key thing. I spoke to a couple people about this the other, other night. And I'm going to tell y'all this. If I ain't told you before, I'm going to tell you again. There's no way any of y'all are going to be saved if you're not willing to suffer. Then he just said, if you suffer with him, you're going to reign with him. It's, he said himself, it behooved him to suffer. It behooved him to suffer. He said, I must suffer. If y'all are not willing to suffer, I ain't talking about just denying yourself according to the flesh. I'm talking about suffering. If y'all are not willing to take on no persecution, if y'all are not willing to go without, you know what I'm talking about? If y'all are not willing to possibly be homeless if you had to be, though God forbid that would happen. You know what I'm talking about? Because we know we ain't never seen the righteous forsaken of begging bread. You know what I'm talking about? We ain't never seen that happen. And we know God is faithful. You know what I'm talking about? That's what it word said. We know God is faithful. He said, if you come seek him, he ain't going to forsake you. But y'all got to be willing. See, a lot of y'all don't want to go through nothing. But what we already know, little mother, anybody be dealing with the word, they either going through something or they finna get ready to go through something or they just got finished with it. You sat and bear witness of my suffering, did you not? Did I fold or fall to any day? You kept it moving. We had word to do then. But see, I thank the Lord because before it came, 
you already know how diligently and, and voraciously I ate the word long before it came. You know what I'm talking about? I already knew what it was for. I tell y'all what it was. When y'all moved out there, all the money you met, Mom Duke told me what? You ain't coming with me like three months before, did it? Did I stop doing what I was doing or did the word continually get free? Because she's going to tell me, y'all know I was putting in work. That's not going to stop nothing. I ain't going to be like, oh, I ain't going to have nowhere to stay. I ain't going to have this here. I ain't worried about it. That's not going to change the fact I got work to do. You know what I'm talking about? Now, what am I going to do? Is the gospel going to get preached or am I going to be spending all my time looking for a job? Which one going to happen? Who am I going to please? See, I can go myself and do what it is that I feel like I got to save myself or I can put my trust in God. And what happened? I got that job about a month beforehand, didn't I? And did I sleep outside any day? No, I did not. Did I go without any food any day? No, I did not. I had more clothes I could deal with. I gave them all away and ended up with nothing. And now I got more. Done went through about two or three times. Got plenty of clothes to wear. Because all my clothes were at my home while. And every bit of clothes I had, some gave it to me. You gave me some. No, son of my little mother. A couple shirts there. I really like that Echo shirt. That black and gray. You, know, you didn't know I like black and red. That shirt was pretty fire there, buddy. And I appreciate that. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, I like that shirt. That shirt was nice. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the Echo. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that shirt was nice. I like that shirt. No, it didn't, actually. No, it didn't. You know, you gave me a couple of Ava Red shirts. I'm for this here. Cause when I got out of prison, huh? huh? That shirt been giving away. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna tell you this. When I got out of prison, all I had and I paid for it was a pair of spare top siders, a yellow nautical shirt, and a pair of cargo shorts. That's all I had. Didn't I, Lamar? That's all I had. My uncle sent me some clothes. My homeboy gave me some clothes. He sent some clothes. By the time we left there, I had a lot of clothes in there. More clothes than I didn't even know what even 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 could wear. Ain't have but that one pair of shoes, and they, they put them calluses on my feet. But thank the Lord, they gone now. You know what I'm talking about? My homeboy bought me a pair of shoes. Homeboy gave me a pair of boots. I got that job. I lived off $100 a week for almost two years. Did I not? Lord, I ain't even make it happen, because I just go back to what I was showed y'all a couple weeks back. When you're a priest, you're not going to have no inheritance. You're not going to have no inheritance amongst the people. I can't be able to do what y'all do and do this at the same time. Because we already know. I don't know if some of y'all know. Look, you already know. That don't make no sense, though. Can I work a 40-hour week job and then when things really get to pop and be able to can keep my full attention over here to this congregation, too? That's not going to happen. Because God said you're going to cleave to one thing you gonna, or, or, or you're going to hate the other. You're going to love one. You're going to despise the other. You can't serve me and money. I can't be able to do his work and be over here to work in the white man's job. Because we know who owns all the jobs. It's the white man's job. There's very few black folks on their own video. It's a lot more. I actually seen that Jacksonville, Florida is the number one city in America to start a business. That's a big city. Yeah, no, but I, I wasn't expecting that. But just so y'all know that then now, y'all got any ideas or designs that the Lord put in your mind that you want to dwell here and you got an idea in your mind, something you want to do? Just know that people say, hey, it's the number one city in America to start a business. Didn't Wasn't expecting to see that. I yeah. yeah, I posted that the other day. Yeah, I kind of figured that. I'm shocked. Uh, side of town, you could do something on your side of town. Yeah, you can. Like, you know, 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 Mm -hmm. yeah, I'd have to, you know, that's what I do. Marketing, promotion, mm -hmm. research. I'd have to, like, really go around and know the area. Hey, but hey, if you feel like there's a niche in the market for you, you know, do what you, you do. See, I was thinking, I don't know, because he ain't down with word, and I don't know if he's going to get it. And I understand, and, and he might not be a good businessman on top of that. Mm -hmm. But I just want y'all to know that and consider that. Because I'm sitting here telling you, if I'm sitting here telling you, every person that's going to be saved must suffer. And I'm going to tell y'all something. Just like the book say about the Lord, he learned obedience through the things that he suffered. I was able to learn. I, re, I understood that and I knew that before it took place. You know what I'm talking about? Because there's a lot of people. What I went through was bad. So some people might consider it as bad. I didn't look at it as bad because I know it could have been worse. I could have literally been on the street. Would you think that would have stopped me from preaching the word? Absolutely not. You know what I'm talking about? Work going to be done. You don't see men's types this way and what it is. The word got to be preached. I care less. I'm willing to live on the street. Don't make me now feel different. His word going to be preached though. I'm willing to suffer whatever because he did. 
That's why the man said, if you willing to suffer, you're going to reign with him. And if you're going to claim you're going to be separated by the gospel, then guess what that means you're going to have to do? You're going to have to suffer in some shape, form, or fashion. And if y'all sit, y'all need to sit there and ask yourself, because this man say, which one of y'all set to make a building and you don't count the cost? If you're not willing to suffer, you need to go ahead and close this book up right now. Because you're not going to reign with him. And all this is going back to where we started from in Ecclesiastes 4. All that's going back to that now. He said he came out of his prison to reign. He came through suffering and laid his life down and picked it back up so he could reign. And if you want to reign with him, you're going to have to die. You're going to have to be willing to suffer so you can reign. And if you're not willing to suffer, you're not going to reign with him. Because guess what Paul just going to tell you? If we deny him, he will also deny us. Because if you deny he's suffering, if you deny obeying his word, if you deny the scripture that testify of him, he's going to deny you too. And you need to know that. That's why he say, blessed are those that are not offended in me. If it offends you to have to suffer, why do you think the Lord told you the seed that fall by the wayside is he that hears the word in the beginning with joy he received it when, when persecution or tribulation arise because of the word, now you offended. And a lot of niggas, when that persecution and that tribulation come, when you got to do some suffering, niggas get offended. They don't want to serve the Lord no more. That's why I think I told, I ain't tell all y'all this, but I'm going to tell you this now. If I ever hear and one of you niggas say that. Oh, why the Lord? Why me? Why I got to go through this here? It ain't but for two reasons. You either sin it or you need to take a pick. Matter of fact, look at 1 Peter 2 because y'all need to hear this here. Huh? Yeah. If you're going through some suffering, that's exactly correct. You being stamped. The Lord say, I can take him. You being stamped. A lot of y'all don't want your stamp. Don't you know what it's like? See, that's what we say around here. That's grade A. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I can stamp that. You know what I'm saying? Because what they put on the beat, grade A beat, they stamp it on. You want that stamp. You want to be grade A, see it, sign, sealed, and delivered with the Lord. You want that stamp. First Peter 2. Make it verse 15. Matter of fact, not verse 15. Make it verse 19. He say, for this is stamp worthy. So you need to thank God for this. This is what he's telling you. You need to thank God for this. If, if a man for conscience towards God endure grief suffering wrongfully. This is thank worthy in your conscience. If you suffer grief and you ain't did nothing wrong. Listen to what he said. He said, for what glory is it when you be buffeted for your fault, you shall take it patiently. If you're doing something, you ain't got no business. What honor you get from that? What honor you getting from that? What's the honor you going to get from that? He said, uh, but... If, when ye do well, and suffer for it, ye take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. He said, but if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, and you suffer with it, and you patient in your suffering, till you come out at the other end so you can see what God teaching you, God can accept that. If you try to buck suffering, if you try to get around suffering, God is not going to accept you. It's simple as that. You know why? Because we're going to put our trust in he who judges righteously. Man. See, see, we'll see what Peter said. Oh, see, Peter. He said, for her and to were ye called. Remember, he said, we separated unto the gospel of the Messiah. Because the Messiah also suffered for us. Leaving us an example that we should follow his steps. See, the man gave you an example of what to do. See, now how the Lord worked it back in. He worked it back in and gave it to you. Look what he tell you. He said, who did no sin, neither was God found in his mouth. The man ain't sin, he ain't tell no lies. He wasn't trying to be slick, wasn't trying to get over. Because I know some of y'all think y'all slick. And some of y'all try to be, tell little lies here and there. Or try to get over on people. Think the Lord don't know it. That's not of God. You're in violation. You need to stop doing it. Ain't no need to be slick. You know what we call it out here? Three-quarter slick. You don't need to be three-quarter slick. Because then you wind up with that buzzard luck. And for y'all that don't mean know what that buzzard luck is, that means everything you touch just crumble. We don't like niggas with buzzard luck. You know what I'm talking about? You don't want that buzzard luck. He said, who, when he was reviled, he reviled not again. When people speak evil of you, keep your mouth closed. When he suffered, he threatened not. He commended himself to he, him that judges righteously. And the reason why a lot of y'all don't be willing to suffer or take nothing, because you haven't committed yourself to God who judged righteously. When the man tell you in the law, look at Exodus 22. See, thank the Lord. This is time. Right back when we jump over here in uh, Jeremiah. The Lord going to work it on that, if he's so true. Exodus 23. Let me see where it is. 
Exodus 23 and 7. He said, keep thee far from a false matter. See, some of y'all, y'all be running the false matters. If it's false and you know it's false, the man just told you, you need to keep it. You know what that relates to? As it pertains to the Savior, you know what that relates to? All them people came up telling lies on him, didn't they? And did the people keep themselves from that false matter? They were steady bringing more people in there to testify, bear false witness against them, didn't they? Look what else he said. And the innocent and the righteous slay thou not, for I will not justify the wicked. Y'all need to remember that. You need to commit yourself to he, because all that stuff he went through, that was wicked people doing it to him, didn't it? But what did the Lord do? If you slay the innocent and the righteous, I'm not going to justify the wicked. Now. And y'all need to look at that, not just for what they did to the Lord. Please know, if you live in wicked, God is not going to justify you. Matter of fact, go on over here back to Romans. Romans 2. Romans 2 and about verse 13. That's all we come in here for. We jump over here to our son in Jeremiah. We're going to get to this prison. We're going to show you the Lord out of Ecclesiastes 4 and 14 in more detail. Y'all just bear with us. He says, uh, For not the hearers of the law are just before God, but the doers of the law shall be justified. And I ain't talking about no part-time doer neither. Because James already told you, don't be a hearer of the word, be a doer of the word. Because if any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer, you lying to yourself. Because truth be told, if you a hearer of the word and not a doer of the word, you ain't nothing but a nigga in a false mouth. What did you say, little mother? Because you pretend. We don't want to be like that. Now, I know some of y'all done dealt with certain stuff for a long period of time, and then you realize, I ain't heard nothing but lie. And I know some of y'all just started. And just came to the realization, I ain't really heard nothing, I ain't really know nothing. These niggas full of crap. But now y'all need to know. Man told you to keep yourself from a false matter. If you claim it's something you ain't doing it, keep yourself from that and live correctly. Because he's not going to justify you. He's not going to do it. And if you think he's going to do it, you're lying to yourself. Because that's the number one. You know it's bad. We talked about this the other day. It's bad when a nigga lies to you. It's even worse when a nigga volunteers. But you know what's the worst of the two? When a grown man or woman sit there and lie to themselves. That's the worst thing of all. Because then you can't even keep it real with yourself. How are you going to be able to keep it real with somebody else? No, y'all sat there and considered that? Y'all realize that? That's the worst thing you could ever do is lie to yourself. I think everybody done lie to themselves about something in a lifetime. Wouldn't you say? I know I don't lie to myself. Just want to make and convince yourself that this is what it's going to be. You know it's a bold faith lie. You know that's not what it is, but that's just what you want. You hope that's what it's going to be. Lying to yourself or convincing yourself you was making something happen. You know you weren't making something happen. I just put this here because I'm going to tell her that when we get there to see her, Lord. Really. But she like when when, when they would tell me she was playing ball, she was like she was lying to herself, making her think she had handles. Thought she could shoot it. She said in her mind she was freaking everybody on the court. In reality, turnovers. You know what I'm talking about? She was honest with it now. She said, in my mind, I'm like, see, I think I'm getting off. She said, in reality, I'm turning the ball over every time I touch. You know what I'm talking about? And some of y'all, y'all thinking in your mind, I'm walking right, I'm doing right, but in reality, you're messing up everything you touch. And you know it, too. You know deep in your mind, you know you ain't doing what you're supposed to be doing. You know what I'm talking about? But people who don't know no better, they thinking, boy, they got it, they got it together. Boy, I'm talking about they serving the Lord. Little they know, man, that nigga full of crap. Because that person put you in the right situation, the right thing, going right back. Talking about you going after stuff when you didn't know no better, you going right back to it. You think people don't know, but the Lord know. And then people around y'all, they know that nigga playing. You know what I'm talking about? Y'all better get that stuff together. Y'all better get your mind focused. You know what I'm talking about? But let's go over here to Jeremiah. I want to say chapter 39. But let me make some. Let's go something because he said he came up out of his prison to reign. So we got to go ahead and establish the testimony of the Lord in that. It wouldn't be right if we didn't do it. Jeremiah 39. I say verse 1. Well, not verse 1 because we dealt with Zechariah already. I want you to look at about verse uh, 5. Uh, about verse 14. He said, even they sent and took Jeremiah out of the court of the prison and committed unto Gedaliah, the son of Achim, 
the son of Shaphan, that he should carry him home. So he dwelt among the people. Now the word of Yah came unto Jeremiah while he was shut up in the court of the prison, saying, Go and speak unto Ebad Melech, the Ethiopian, saying, Thus saith Yah of hosts, the God of Israel. Behold, I will bring my words upon this city for evil, and not for good, and they shall be accomplished in that day before thee. He said, But I will deliver thee in that day, saith Yah, and thou shalt not be given into the hand of the men whom thou art afraid. For I will surely deliver thee, and thou shalt not fall by the sword, but thy life shall be for a prey unto thee, because thou hast put thy trust in me, saith Yah. So when we sit there and look at this here, the men that had the Bill Christ, the Lord was in the flesh, right? And he prayed to get a fight of what he was going to. But what did he already know? He said, I'm going to deliver you. He said, I'm going to deliver you. Why? Look the key word he put in the last part. Because he said he committed himself to he that judged righteously and Peter them. But what did he say why he said he was going to deliver him? He said, I'm going to surely deliver you. You're not going to fall by the sword because you put your trust in me. So this goes back to what Paul said. He said, we got a sentence in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves, but we should trust in God who judges righteously. So y'all need to sit back and look at that. While you're going through your sufferings and things that you've got to deal with or afflictions or persecutions, the whole time your trust should be in God. Your trust shouldn't be in me. Your trust shouldn't be in yourself. You know what I'm talking about? Your trust should be in God to know that he's going to deliver. Because all I can tell you is what y'all say. All I can tell you is what y'all sure say. Now once you hear what he say, why you don't believe him? Why you don't trust him? This man told y'all, all things are possible unto him that believe. All things are possible. You don't think he can't deliver you from these sufferings? You think he can't deliver you from these afflictions? You think he can't free you from the prison of sin and the prison of death? Do you not think he's capable of doing this when he told you in the law, is there anything too hard for me? This man made a man from dust. This man rose his son from the grave. This man spoke a word and it was done. When y'all seen the sun go down today, you know what really happened? Y'all say set. Guess what that sun's going to do? It's going to set. If he told the sun stay up for 24 hours straight and don't never set, what you think the sun's going to do? It's going to stay right there. But he said it's got to go down because I don't got a law. I gave it a commandment. I told that sun to go down. Because I need the moon for seeds. Because I gave a commandment. Y'all got to realize and look at that. God gave a commandment. It's going to stand. So when he say, I'm going to deliver you. If you put your trust in me, that commandment is going to stand. If you say, if he tell you, if you suffer with my son, you can reign with him. That commandment going to stand. Because he said he came forth out of prison. So he could reign. And if you're going to be born, the key thing y'all supposed to call when he say born in his kingdom, being born of God. Because he said the kingdom of God is upon you, didn't he? The kingdom of God is the spirit of the living God, eternal life. And for you to be able to be born of that, you're going to have to be poor in spirit. Look at Matthew 5 and 4, since I mentioned that. We'll get back to that in a minute. We tie it all in together in a minute. All right, ain't for it. Verse 3. Make it five, Matthew 5 and 1. Matthew 5 and 1. Matthew 5 and 1. He says, Seeing the multitudes, he went up unto a, into a mountain, and when he was set, his disciples came unto him, and he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Ain't that what we just read, Ecclesiastes? Ain't that what we just read? That if you poor in spirit, the kingdom is yours. Let us look at James 2 and 5. See, a lot of y'all don't want to be poor in spirit. You don't really want to humble yourself down. You don't want to lose nothing. You want to keep everything you got and still think you're going to make it with God. You don't want to lose nothing. You don't want to get nothing up. But yet you want everything God got to give. And the number one thing you don't want to give up is yourself. James 2 and 5. He said, Hearken, my beloved brethren. Have not God chosen the poor of this world, rich in faith, and heirs of the kingdom which he has promises in that love. Because when we sit back and look at it, Yahshua said, I don't have nowhere to stay. But I'm doing this work then. He said, the birds of the air have nests, and the foxes that have holes, son of man ain't got nowhere to stay. We just read a couple weeks ago. What did Peter say? He said, we done gave up everything. We forsook everything. Why none of y'all ain't willing to forsake everything to get it back a hundredfold in the, in the regeneration? Because you're not born in this man's kingdom and you're not going to have a place in it. 
Because you haven't made yourself poor in spirit. You want to be rich in the earth, but not rich in heaven. See, matter of fact, before I get to this Revelation 2 and 9, come on over here to what you see what the Lord tell you over here in Matthew 6. You need to hear it again. Matthew 6 and 19. He said, lay not up for yourselves, yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust doth corrupt and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, where thieves do not break through and st nor steal. For where your treasure is, their heart, your heart will be also. Now, I'm not telling you niggas to be bums. You know what I'm talking about? I ain't telling y'all to be some sorry, no good niggas. Yeah, get up off your behind. You got a job to do. Go and do what you got to do. You know what I'm talking about? If it's a business that's in your mind that you want to start and the Lord allows you to be able to start it, be diligent about your business and do good work. And when I say do good work, I mean, I mean if you're doing a service business, make sure your service is impeccable. Make sure your, if you've got something you sell it, make sure your product is the best that there is to offer. If you're going to do something, then do it. Don't be slothful with your work just like don't be slothful in your service to God. Don't be like that. You know what I'm talking about? Don't be like that. If you go to work out, look here. Be consistent and dedicated and disciplined in that. Because all these things, whether it be whether your work habits on your job or a business you're trying to start or working in the gym, it can be reflective of your service to God. What do you say, Lamar? It can be reflective of it. See, we want you to be fully mature and grown up and adult in everything you do. If you're going to do something, do it well. Do it well and give for 100% maximum effort. And if you know you're not going to give 100% maximum effort, you just sit your butt down until you can do so. You know what I'm talking about? But at the same time, don't be laying your treasures up on this earth now. Because this thing here is temporary. You need to be laying yourself up for the things that's eternal. Because look what this man is going to tell you. He said, the light of the body is the eye. If therefore thy eye be single, the whole body is full of light. If you stay focused, if your mind is steady focused on serving God in spirit and truth, you got light in you. And we know what that light is in it. That's y'all sure. Because you can have that lamp. But if you ain't got that oil, you ain't going to have no light. Because you can't light no lamp without no oil. Can you? you can't get no light without that oil. The lamp is the commandment. The oil is the spirit. And with that light, with that lamp and that oil, you can get light. And that light is eternal life. And you're not going to get it if, you don't, if, if you're not willing to come about that prison. If you're not willing to die. If you're not willing to forsake sin. You're not going to be able to make it. Which means you're not going to reign with this man. Which means you're not going to be born of his kingdom. Which means you're not humble. Which means you have no love whatsoever to serve God. I mean, you have no faith. So you need to look at that. Because if being poor in spirit, like he made it to two folks. Because if you humble yourself to God, because he said, blessed are the meek, they inherit the earth, right? If you can humble yourself to the ungrafted word, which is able to save your soul, that means you're rich in faith because you believe what you heard. Because what did James just tell you? He said they poor in the world, but they rich in faith. Faith. Y'all don't even look at the fact that this man made himself poor, that you could be rich, that you could get the riches of God through faith in him. You don't even want to suffer to be able to give. You don't even want to be able to suffer to be able to give. Because the problem is you don't trust God. And you got to sit there and ask yourself, why is my, like that man said, help me Lord with my unbelief. And the only thing we can help you with is, Look at the man. All I can give you witnesses is to what the books say and what things the individuals I've been around that they can tell you the Lord is faithful. Could you be able to tell them if we had the ability, you could let them know the Lord is faithful? You know what I'm talking about? If y'all don't believe that this man is faithful and that he can deliver you out of every single solitary situation that you may have to suffer, y'all not going to make it. Y'all not going to make it because you don't trust him. That is the number one key thing. Of course we want y'all to live set apart. Of course we want you to obey what this man tell you to do. But the first commandment is to love God with all your heart, all your strength, and all your soul. And as I told y'all before, you can't love someone you don't trust. You can't follow someone you don't trust. And see, the thing is, it's easy for y'all to trust God when things going good. But when the suffering comes, how, how many of y'all going to be willing to trust him and still stay? You know, what you think? A lot of people fold, don't they? A lot of people fold. Because the first thing y'all go to crying out, that's what I mentioned. I bet I never hear none of you niggas tell my Lord, I can't take it. Why me? Why not you, nigga? Why not you? That's what you need to look at. Why not you? 
Why are you? What's about you that you deem yourself unworthy of eternal life? That you ain't willing to suffer to get the kingdom of God? Hold what you got. Come on over here and please uh, Acts 14 and 22. Thank the Lord He just brought it in my mind. Y'all come on over here. I come on back to Matthew 6 in a second. But the Lord just brought it to my mind. Now I'm gonna see what y'all gonna do with this one here. You gonna see what you gonna do with this one here? Let's see what the Lord says. Because this is what the suffering for. Let's see what it is. And now he was talking about this. Let's just see what it is now. Let's see what it is. Acts 14, 22. Confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them. That means warning them or encouraging them. To continue in the faith that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. It may say you're going to have to take on a lot of trouble. You're going to have to take on some suffering. He said that's how you're going to be confirmed. But the point of the matter is, don't be taking on no suffering for committing sin. Let your suffering be come because the man is trying to prove you so you can be made obedient through the things that you're suffering. You sit here looking at things, oh, I don't want to go through this, I don't want to go through that, I don't want to deal with this, I don't want to deal with that. But your Savior went through it. And through those things he suffered, he learned to obey. How y'all think y'all going to learn to obey if you don't take nothing on? How are you going to be able to learn to be able to trust and really have a firm love for God if you don't take nothing on? There's not a righteous man in this book that ain't go through no suffering. The whole book about suffering. Is it not? Every prophet we read about, he suffered. Moses suffered. Joshua suffered. You know what I'm talking about? We can look at David. He suffered. Isaiah took on suffering. Jeremiah took on suffering. The whole book of Job is about suffering. The whole book of Job is about suffering. If I'm not mistaken, then Pale ain't here with me. I think Job's name means to suffer. That's why he say it behooved the Messiah to suffer. And y'all need to look at that. Joseph suffered. Abel suffered. Even Noah suffered. You think that wasn't no suffering when people getting there watching people get killed? All these men suffered, showing you forth the glory of your king and the sufferings that he would take on to deliver your soul from death. And don't none of you niggas want to suffer. I'm, I'm, I ain't going to lie to you. I ain't better than now one of y'all. I look forward to mine because the Lord gave me some understanding before I went through it. He let me understand what it was that the sufferings was for. I bless the Lord in the name of Yahshua for the simple fact. He gave me the understanding before I went through the sufferings to understand what they were for. We was at my homeboy house. We was at my homeboy said how he was cutting my hair. Well, taping me up. You know what I'm saying? And, and my homeboy, fat boy, was telling him something. He was like, yeah, he's just going through something right now. I told him, yeah, I'm going through something. I can take it, though. I knew what it was for. This is when the suffering first started. You know what I'm talking about? But I knew what they were for. And I thank the Lord he gave me a mind to be able to understand it. Because a lot of times, people, he don't give people the mind to understand it's not because of any wherewithal or any greatness or, 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 or righteousness in me. He just gave me a mind to understand his word that when the sufferings came, I knew what they were spoke and I was ready to take them on. The same way the Messiah, he said he behooved him. He wanted to suffer. He wanted to do it. Y'all got to want to do that. That's how you're going to be confirmed with God. And what's more better than being knowing that you confirm with God? Look at Daniel. He suffered. And you know what the Lord called Daniel? He said, I was a man greatly beloved. This man suffered. He was willing to suffer. He was willing to do it. Y'all got to be willing to do it so you can reign with him. So you can be born in his kingdom. Because we got an everlasting kingdom now. That has no end. Ain't that what the word says? So you got to be willing to do it. It's for your profit. There is nothing that Yahshua is going to bring to you that's not going to be for your gain. You ever had, any of y'all ever had somebody tell you, I ain't here to hurt you. The Lord is not here to hurt you. If the man saw fit to call you unto his word so you can be separated unto it, you're going to have to be separated. So. It's bottom line. We just read that. He said he got to confirm the souls of the disciples. Look at Luke 14. You got to be willing to suffer. I mentioned it to you earlier, but I just want you to hear. Lot Luke 14 by verse uh verse 28. That's all we come. Verse 27. Luke 14 and 27. He said, "Whosoever did not bear his cross 
Remember, that's that suffering. If you ain't willing to bear your cross and come after me, you can't be my disciple. And if you can't be his disciple, if you ain't willing to bear that cross, that means you ain't willing to take on no suffering. You're not going to be confirmed. You're not going to be confirmed. That's why every week y'all don't be realizing that just like what they were doing then, we warn y'all, we exhort y'all, we encourage y'all to suffer. To suffer. To take it on. Not only to suffer in the flesh to cease from sin, but to take on whatever it is, suffering or tribulation or persecution, you got to take on, take it on. Basically, trust in God. Because God's going to keep whooping y'all behind. He's going to keep taking y'all through stuff till you learn to trust Him. He's going to keep doing it. Until you learn to give your whole heart over, completely over to this man, and trust him with every ounce of your soul, you're not going to progress in this word, and you're not going to get the spirit. Until you're able to trust this man with every ounce of your being. I'm going to ask y'all, all y'all right now, individually, and I want you to be real with me, and I'm dead serious, and I'm going to run it down step by step. I want each and every last one of you to be dead honest. Catherine, you trust God with every ounce of your soul. Don't be slow to answer now. I'm going to ask every last one of y'all, line by line. I'm dead serious now, and I want an honest answer. Catherine, you trust this man with every ounce of your soul? I'll take that silence as a no. What about you, Barry? You next in line. I'll take that silence as a no. What about you, Glover? I'm saying I don't get no answer. I'm going to take it as a no. I'm going to take that answer out of that silence as a no. What about you, Ron? Okay, I say, do you trust God with every ounce of your soul? Okay, little muffin, what about you? You trust God with every ounce of your soul? I know he do, but he's sleep. Ron, what about you? You trust God with every ounce of your soul? Okay, as long as you're being honest with me now. Brittany and Nicole, y'all trust God with every ounce of y'all soul? I'm talking about, I want you to be honest with me now, because guess what? The Lord knows if you're lying. And if you get on here and lie, you ain't did nothing but lie to God. You ain't lied to me. Go ahead, Brittany on the... Huh? I just want you to be honest. Because I appreciate the honesty. Because this is the reason why this man is harking on this right now. What do y'all think? What about you, Nicole? What'd you say? Do you hear me? I said, do you trust God with every ounce of your soul? I'm asking y'all this for a reason. It doesn't matter to you that, I already, that we didn't already discuss it. I gotta ask it. But I got to do this here because it's for everybody. You know what I'm talking about? Now, for the wolves that, that, that stay silent, they silence was enough. You know what I'm talking about? So when you sit here and y'all look at this, just know y'all breaking the first commandment, which is to love y'all with all your heart, all your soul, all your strength, and all your might. Now, for the three that answer, and I want your honest answer, what is it that is... The, I, Okay, and I can under, I hear that, but see now you got to understand one certain certain thing. Now, okay, now, and I appreciate that honesty. You know, I know you didn't already told me, Brittany. What is it precluding you? That's holding you back from trusting this man completely. And you know what that is? You know why the Lord ain't gonna do that there? Because you have no patience. See, the problem is with, with a lot of people, you feel like because this man ain't moving on your time, that okay, then he ain't with me. But a lot of times, the reason I'm going to be honest with you, a lot of times this man don't move on your time is for one or two things. Because he already know you don't trust him or you're doing stuff you ain't got no business. It's simple as that. It's simple. It's simple as that. You know what I'm talking about? It's simple as that. 
And I, I wrong pretty much just laid his out there. He ain't been rolling with the Lord that long. You know what I'm saying? Now I'm going to tell y'all, this is me personally. And I done told y'all this before. When my homeboy showed me Deuteronomy 28, I trusted this man fully because I know that happened. You know what I'm talking about? Because I know this meant that we were put on boats and we were brought over here. But see, I want y'all to go to Numbers 23 and 19. But you see, the reason why I say that clicked in my, I know y'all believe that, but me knowing that if he did this in his wrath for us being disobedient as a people, then I know what he will do in his mercy for obedience. You see, you understand what I'm saying? See, then when I began, as he, as he began to progress on, see, this is why over time this man has had us look at the sufferings of the Lord, because y'all were supposed to be identifying the characteristics in that behavior and pattern yourself after that. Because this man knew he was going to die. This man knew that he was going to be spat upon. This man knew that he was going to be killed. This man knew that men were going to lie on him. But he trusted that his father in heaven would raise him from the dead. That he would do exactly what he told him to do. And that he would execute his word on his behalf. See, when we sat back and we just read that about when the Lord, he said, he left us an example. See, we just don't be looking at the stuff that Yahshua did just to be looking at it. We're looking at it because we need to be identifying characteristics of behavior and begin to pattern ourselves after that behavior. Wouldn't you say? So when we sat here and we read that first Peter, it said the man left us an example that we should follow his steps. And the last thing that he mentioned was he committed himself to he that judges righteously. So that means you need to believe. Matter of fact, before we go any further, let's look at Hebrews 11. Then I bound. What I said I was going to go to the there. I don't even remember. Lord, bring it back to PC. I want y'all to look at Hebrews 11. Hmm? And I want y'all to look at verse 6. And y'all need to really resonate in this mind. Because I can understand. I'm going to tell you something real, T. I wasn't taught how to have faith in God either. I didn't know. How, oh, it was number 20 and 19. I didn't know it. No, no, nothing about it. It was just the fact of I believed him on the strength of his word. But then that means your, your faith is small. And, and, and we'll read all that too. I'm, we, we got, we got, Lord got word for all that. He got something for you. Look at here. Hebrews 11 and 6. He say, but faith, without faith, it is impossible to please him. There is no way any of y'all are going to be able to please God if you do not believe in him. Because the man just told you in verse 2 that faith is the evidence of things, verse 1 I should say, hoped for and not seen. Abraham didn't see the promise, but he believed. There's a reason why I consistently and constantly take you back to Abraham in the scripture every single time. Why is that little mother? God counted him as his friend. Because he believed him. You got to sit there and look at that. This man told you, I'm going to make, I'm going to give you this land. I'm going to make you an heir. I'm going to do all of this. That man ain't seen none of that. He trusted him because he know who he was dealing with. That's the reason why y'all should be able to trust this man with your whole ounce of your whole being, your whole soul. Know who you dealing with. And know when he see fit to make something happen, he'll do it. But as long as you continually are stubborn, disobedient, rebellious, procrastinating, hypocrite, and dragging your feet, the man ain't going to do not a single solitary thing for you. As long as you got unbelief or distrust in your heart, he ain't going to do a single solitary thing for you. It don't make no sense for him to do it, now does it? Now for your KT, and like what Lucy with Ron, and I respect that Ron totally, you ain't been walking with him long enough to trust him. But you got to look at this here. If you're saying, I want to live this way, I want to live that way, you're supposed to be saying you trust in God because you want the reward that he have to offer. And if you believe in the reward that he have to offer, how could you not trust him? Do y'all understand that? Do you hear me? I ain't telling this to be mean to y'all. I re He really, obviously, and I praise the Lord. Blessed be God in the name of y'all sure for. He knows some of y'all don't trust him like he both. He knows this. And he trying to get you right. Look, Mark, one other time you didn't trust God like you were supposed to. I know you didn't. Haven't we discussed it before? Even with Nell, before she was, wasn't she at a point where she didn't trust God like she was supposed to? You don't come out. She made that mention. What she said, it was held up. Remember when I asked to look the right in her face? I said, is the Lord telling you to go to Georgia? She looked at me crazy. Was you in there that day? 
I think you might have been. When she looked at me crazy, I know he told her to go. And you know what I told her? You need to go. You know what I'm talking about? Because don't be around here worrying about me or this, that, that, and the other, and the man told you to go. Because if the man told you to go, you need to go. Don't worry about why I'm going. And I done told some of y'all before I tell you, my sister left here, she ain't had nowhere to stay. She ain't had, she was staying in a hotel, she ain't had no car. Did she go somewhere to, not to stay too long? No, she did not. Did she get a car? Did she go without a car too long? No, she did not. God tell y'all again, when my sister, uh, he told her to quit her job, he quit that job, then she get a temp job, now she got a contract with them people. Because it's got to come down to that you've got to know who you serve, and this is what he's going to tell you in verse 6. Look at it now. He said, but without faith it's impossible to please him. But he that come to God must believe that he is. You must believe this man sit in heaven and y'all sure at his right hand, and that he is a reward of them that diligently seek him. You need to know that God will reward you if you do what he tells you to do and you seek after him. What did the Lord tell you? Don't worry about nothing in his life. Then. We was in Matthew 6, but we ain't finished all the way out. We ain't going by. He said what? Take no thought for your life. Don't worry about what you're going to eat. Don't worry about what you're going to wear. He said, but rather seek ye the kingdom of God first. Seek the spirit. Seek to be separated unto the gospel first and the kingdom and God's righteousness, which is faith in him. And he gave you everything you need. But as long as your faith is not in him, because that's the righteousness of God. I done told y'all this a lot of times. The righteousness of God is faith in God. It's faith in his word. It's a belief and trust and hope in him. And as long as you don't have that, God is not going to reward you. See, on your end, he done showed you. I done told you that many times with, with, with the Sabbath on your job. The man showed you, you seek me, I'll reward you. I will reward you. If you seek me, I will reward you. If you believe in me, if you trust in me, if you hope in me, I will reward you. Because I'm going to tell y'all something. The gift of faith is the most beautiful gift you could ever receive. There's nothing like it. There's nothing like it. But see, I want you to look at something. You four of you talking about being scared and worried. And I understand. Some people be like that. First John 4 and 18. I understand why that does. Because basically y'all ain't been dealing with nothing. But it's the purpose is, is you got to know who you were serving. And we're going to go to Hebrews 6 after this. Lord, work it out and take us in the direction he want to go for his glory. I thank the Lord. We're going to get back to what we what the premise is for, if the Lord sees graciously permit. First John 4 and 18, Therefore, there is no fear in love. If you're going to love God with all your heart and all your soul and all your might, you cannot have fear. You can't have it. Because ain't worry is just another form of fear. You can't have no fear. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of a sound mind. Can't have no fear. Because look what he tell you. Perfect love casts out fear. A complete love in God gets rid of all fear. Hold this and look at Psalm 27 and 1. We come on back, Ryan. This just came in my mind. Psalm 27 and 1. Y'all all right? I just want y'all to understand this here. I understand y'all what, what y'all saying. Not being hard, mean to you about the matter here. But the Lord wants you to trust. Him. Don't think that I don't understand. You know what I'm talking Don't think that I don't understand. And again, Ron, I respect that though. Because at least you honest enough to know. But I'm going to tell you like I said. I thank the Lord. The only reason that could have came to my mind. Oh, this whole word is true. And I got to get in line with it. It's because the Lord gave me that mind. That's it. That's the only reason why. It ain't got nothing to do with me. It's just because he gave me that mind to trust him. And I could put it to this way before we read this verse. Any of y'all ever had a friend or a family member who if they told y'all something, you felt like, oh, that's good as done. If y'all, anybody, y'all, any of y'all had a friend or a family member who you trusted completely, that you knew they would never do you wrong, they would never do no evil to you, and whatever they told you they was going to do, they was going to do it. Because if you can be able to put your trust in a flesh and blood human being, put your trust in your God. Don't be around here just doing this stuff thinking, oh, I've got these head wraps on. I don't eat no pork no more. I keep the Sabbath no more. But then you don't trust God. Because remember, we read it last week. The fearful and the unbelieving are the first ones going in the lane. And right now, we're trying to help you with your unbelief. Because at the end of the day, when you got fear and you got worry, it's cause, because you just don't believe in God. Like I said, this means you're your faith small. You know what I'm talking about? That just means, yeah, thank the Lord, I'll show you enough. Psalm 27 and 1, look what this man say. He say, Yah is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? 
Yah is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? You ain't got no need to be afraid of Yah is your strength. And we know he that had mind is stayed on thee, trusteth in thee. Trust ye in Yah forever, for trust in Yah is everlasting strength. That's Isaiah 26, verses about 3 and 4. You know, I read that to you. Well, we used to a lot. We don't read it as much no more. You know why I used to read that verse to y'all a lot no more? You don't know why. So you could trust in God. You heard what he said? He said, he that mind is stayed on thee, he keep thee in perfect peace. Didn't this man just say perfect love cast out fear? Because if you got fear, you can't have no peace. But if your mind is stayed on God and his word, and your mind, I'm going to tell you like I said, I thank the Lord. When I first started dealing with this thing, I used to go to sleep with this man on my mind and wake up with him on my mind. I'm talking about not just thinking about the Lord. I'm talking about the word itself. I would literally wake up and that's what my thought would be was his word. My mind was completely stayed on him. Nothing else mattered. Nothing else mattered. That's why I be telling y'all, that's the number one reason, and you can go look at 1 Corinthians 7, that's why the number one reason why a lot of y'all are not ready to be married. Because the man say it's easier for you to be unmarried because then you're not going to be distracted. And a lot of y'all are not where you need to be, you're not where you're supposed to be, but then you want to get married, you're not going to be able to serve the Lord without distraction. That's the number one main reason. You see how the Lord working all the way back, tie everything in together. That's the number one reason why he had me ask all y'all that to the tongue street. Because you're still not ready. Because you're not faithful. How are you going to be able to be faithful to a husband or a wife and you don't even be faithful to the, your God in heaven? You don't even trust him. There's no way you're going to be able to do it. And one thing was certain, and I hear you, and that's a lot of people's problem, all throughout this earth, you can't put God on your time clock. You can't put him on your time clock. I guarantee you, he's going to crack your skull open every single time. I ain't never, that's something, he showed me that one time. I tried to put him on a time clock one time when I first started doing it. You hadn't even started rolling with it. Rolling with it yet no more. I tried it one time. And when he cracked my head for doing it, I ain't do it no more. He ain't take it that one time. I said, I ain't gonna try. I only took it that one time. Because anything y'all tell me, please no, it ain't nothing that I ain't never thought. Some things I about to did myself when I first thought it. But he let me know immediately. Don't try me, nigga. I get this done when it's time for me to get it done. I said, well, pray the Lord. Then. Do as you see fit. He learned me real quick. Y'all got to learn that. You can't put him on that time. Have you learned that yourself? You can't put him on no time clock. You can't put that man on no time clock. Cause I guarantee you, I don't know none of y'all putting none of y'all parents on no time clock. Just think about it. What am I over here? Look at verse 2. We'll tie, we'll tie this right on in to something else here with, with this man on Sunday. He said, when the wicked, even my enemies and my foes, come upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though a host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. No wolf should rise against me, and this will I be confident. So no matter what, and don't just look at it as he's talking about his enemies. You know what I'm talking about? But no matter what come up against you in life or a camp against your body, you don't need to fear. He's saying this one thing, you need to be confident. You need to be confident in your God, because that's what faith is about. It's a confidence in God. We can go all through this book with men who had confidence in God, did we not? Hezekiah had confidence in God. David had confidence in God. Noah had confidence in God. Abraham had confidence in God. Moses had confidence in God. Yahshua had confidence in God. The apostles had confidence in God. We need to mimic that behavior. How many times since we've been, some of y'all been rolling, have we read about men who trusted in God and their actions and how they were rewarded? Haven't we seen that a lot of times? So when we sit back and we begin to see all these men who the Lord rewarded for having a confidence in him, that should show us to be able to show he's going to do me the same way. You got to always remember who you serve. He's merciful. He's compassionate. He said he forgive iniquity and sin. And he showed mercy and compassion to thousands of them who love him and keep his commandments. He is a man of his word. And I know a lot of y'all ain't used to dealing with somebody who's a man of their word. You might remember this because I used to preach it in the street all the time. And I tell you, you should be able to roll with this man because he's a man of his word. You got to know what it's like to deal with a man who's a man of his word. There's nothing like that. Somebody you ain't even got to work. Oh, I know he's going to do that. I know he's going to do that. That's how y'all got to look at it. You can't be worrying about this here and worrying about that there when the man just told you, don't take no thought for your life. Don't take no thought for it. 
The only thing y'all need to be concerned with is what is it that I'm doing that's contrary to God's word and stop doing it. And let me learn more about my God so I can receive his spirit because my faith in him is incomplete. But look here at verse 4. Though. He say one thing have I desired of y'all that I will seek after. Because remember now, he said seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things going to be added. I'm telling you, the Lord tie all this stuff together now if y'all just hearken, if you just listen. That I may dwell in the house of Yah all the days of my life to behold the beauty of Yah and to inquire in his temple. If you want to behold the beauty of Yah, you want to behold Yahshua. Sure. If you want to behold Yahshua, sure, you must trust in him. Listen to what he said. For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle he shall hide me. He shall set me upon a rock. Man said he'll set you upon a rock if you do trust in him. I want y'all to look at Isaiah 26 because I mentioned it. I want y'all to see it on the page. I know it verbatim. Thank the Lord. He took me straight to it. Isaiah 26 and 3. I know it verbatim because that verse stood out to me from day one. Verse 3. He says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace. Whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusts in thee. So you got to ask yourself, if your mind ain't staying on y'all, your mind ain't staying on y'all sure because you don't trust him. It's simple as that. Ain't no way around it because the book just said so, didn't it? Then when you say, look, my book just said so. If your mind is stayed on God, it's because you trust in him. If you find your mind not stayed on God, it's because you don't trust in him. Look what else he's going to tell you. Trust ye in y'all forever. For in Yah is everlasting strength. And we know strength of God. That's your faith. That's where you're going to get your strength from. That's what's going to give you the ability for what you got to go to Philippians for. Thank you, Lord. This is every, this every Christian favorite verse. This is every Christian favorite verse. Verse 8. We're going to come up to it. This is every Christian favorite verse. Y'all need to consider it. Look what Paul was talking about because Paul was talking about sufferings. Read them up. And he said, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of are, are good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. So when you sit back and look at it, we know the word of God is true, and it's honest, is it not? It's just, and it's pure, and it's lovely, and it's a good report, and it's pure, and it's the praise of God, which is which, which son of God, uh, Jacob that is, who named me praise. That's true. He said, y'all need to think on them things. And if you ain't thinking on them things, I don't that mean your mind stayed on God, which means you trust in him. That's all Paul was telling you to do with what we just read in Isaiah. Mimic that behavior. Think upon these things. Let your mind be stayed upon these things. It's for a reason. He said, those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. Now, some of y'all ain't seen me do these things, but you have. And he has. You know what I'm talking about? And Glover has as well. You know what I'm talking about? But some of y'all, the things that y'all done heard and y'all done received from me, if you do what you've been taught and do what you've been told and do what you've been instructed, the God of peace will be with you. And that peace will cast out that fear because perfect love casts out fear. Perfect love casts out fear. Thank the Lord. The son that we came down. He said, but I rejoice greatly that now at the last your care of me have flourished again when you were all so careful, but you lacked opportunity. Now, I'm going to say this here. For any of y'all that done did anything for me, see, I appreciate it. You know what I'm talking about? Because you see Paul sitting there telling you, y'all know I've been going through, son. And some of y'all been wanting to do, son, but you lacked the opportunity to do so. You know what I'm talking about? But look what Paul's going to tell you. He said, but not that I speak in, in respect of want, for I have learned and whatsoever state I am, therewith to be content. And I done learned that as well. And some of y'all need to realize that. That no matter what state God got you in, you need to learn to be comfortable. Whether it be good, whether it be bad. See, but as long as your mind ain't content, God ain't going to move for you. Look what else Paul's going to say. He said, I know how to both be a base and I know how to abound. See, the Lord taught me that. I know how to be low and I know how to abound. I know what it's like to have nowhere to stay. Sleeping in a, on a hard bed four days out of the week. Roaming the streets, waiting the time to put in some work. You got to know how to be low and you got to know how to be high. If you're going to serve God, you need to know how to do that. Look what else he said. 
He say, everywhere and in all things I am instructed to both be full and to be hungry, both to abound and suffer need. He say, I can do all things through the Messiah which strengthened me. See, that, that's what you need to look at. You can be able to do all things through the Messiah who strengthened you through what? Through trusting in him, is it not? That man say, I know how to be hungry, I know how to be full. I know how to be naked, I know how to be clothed. I know how to suffer need, I know how to have a lot. But I know whatever it is that I'm going through, y'all sure are going to hold me down. Because I trust in it. Look what he's going to say. Now I understand that you have well done that you did communicate with my affliction. I'm going to sit here and look at it here. Now the Lord done put it in some of y'all mind to come down this way and you suffer and all of us saying we're supposed to be family and living God. You think we're going to let you suffer? Do y'all really think we're going to sit there and let y'all suffer and watch it? Go to Acts the second chapter. This is something I be telling y'all a lot of the brothers want to do with and we're going to do the same thing. It's, but we're not going to sit there and watch y'all suffer. We're going to do whatever the Lord gives us the ability and capability to do. Acts 2, verse 43. And the fear came upon every soul. As a matter of fact, make it verse 41. Then they gladly received his word. And then they that gladly received his word were baptized in the same day. They were added unto them about 3,000 souls. They continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and breaking bread and in prayer. You see the key thing? Say the people stood in the teachings that the apostles gave them. He said, and fear came upon every soul and many signs and wonders, wonders and signs were done by the apostles. And all that believed were together and had all things common. And they sold their possessions and goods and parted to the, them to all men as every man had need. And they continue and daily with one accord in the temple, breaking bread from house to house, they eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. So you sit there looking at, they say they gave to every man that had need. Now you think we're not going to do that for each other? All of us sitting here, we're going to be like this here. You think we couldn't be able to pull something together if somebody needed something to eat? Or pull something together if somebody needed help with a light bill? Or, thing to, or help each other out with the rent, whatever the Lord be able to be able to allow us to do to help one of them. You think we're just going to sit there and be like, shoot, that nigga just got the song. This ain't no goddamn Christian church. That's not none of that, that devilable stuff you've seen the people do on Sunday to just let their people suck. You know why they said their people were in singleness of heart? Because the scriptures bear witness they will be one heart and one mind. If I sit there and watch you suffer, I'm suffering along with you. He said we members of one another, did he not? We're not going to sit there and do that. Y'all got to know who you serve and know how you God operate. You got to know who you serve and know how you God operate. Go on back over here to this first John 4. Cause see, and, and I understand what you mentioned on that team, but see, fear can be a very strong hindrance in the servitude of God. It can be a very strong hindrance. We can't allow our fear of the unknown to dictate our service to God because it's going to cause us to stumble. And God forbid that you should stumble. Because we're not here to put a stumbling block before you. We're trying to encourage you to save yourself. We're trying to encourage you to trust God. Because the reason why I mention that, that a lack of faith is a violation of the first commandment. Deuteronomy 6. Verses 4 through 6. That's the greatest commandment of them all. Verse 18 again, there is no fear in love, because perfect love casts out fear, because fear hath torment. He that fears not made perfect in love. Now I'm going to say this, and it's just going to be real. T, you ain't been walking long enough to well, you should be perfect in love. Brittany, you ain't been as long, but you should be further down the line, though. You definitely should be further down the line. You should be a tad bit more spiritually mature to the point that you should be trusting God a little bit better than you do at that present time, according to what you just stated. You should be further along. Ron, I understand that one now. But that's real though, but you should be further along. You've been rolling with us now, I probably say about a good maybe seven, eight months. You should just be further along. Your trust in God should be a little bit more developed than what it is right now. And you shouldn't be looking at how fast what he what what he what you want ain't coming. You should be looking at you said you warned the word. You've been getting plenty of that. Right or wrong. You say if you said that's what you wanted, you wanted the word, you've been getting plenty of that. And then you should have took the what you've been learning from the word and been able to say, hey, then the man will move for you. It's like they said, y'all better be glad I can't actually get y'all in the same room all the time. Because if you think we sit down long going through the word, wait till we have a meeting or two. Now, what you think, little mother? Meeting's going to be long, man. 
No, not too long. You know what I'm talking about? Because some things I chastise y'all for about in the open in front of everybody, and some things I won't. Some things I pull you to the side and let you know. Because we already know the book say rebuke those who sin before all that others might feel. But sometimes it ain't to do that deal. It's to just let everybody know. I understand what y'all be going through. I understand some of y'all feel, some of y'all thought processes. You know what I'm talking about? I understand all that though. And I can be very, very patient with you. And it might sound harsh because how I sound when I speak it to you, it ain't trying to be loud or be boisterous or make you feel horrible about yourself. You know what I'm talking about? But it's to make you know, to understand the seriousness of where you're at. Because the Lord wants you to be urgent. You need to have a sense of urgency. You know what I'm talking about? And you need to learn how to trust God and let yourself go. And stop worrying. Now, T, I know you're in because you say you're just a natural warrior. Some people like that. Was you a natural warrior, little mother? Some people just like that. That's a couple of people I've known in my life. That they just naturally did that. You know what I'm saying? They just worry a lot. You know what I'm saying? Nell was like that. And usually people who worry a lot, they overthink us. You know what I'm saying? People that think about a lot of things and all that. Stuff. And that's understandable. It happens. But sometimes we just have to learn. Because if from time to time, I ain't like that all the time. But times where I overthink things. Thinking, you know what I'm talking about, too far down the line. And I begin to make myself go haywire. Because I'm trying to think, think out things too hard. And usually that's coming from you want to try to control the situation as much as you possibly can. You know what I'm talking about? But then y'all going to come back and throw show forth and show you. You can't control. You don't control anything. You know what I'm saying? I had to learn that though. I learned that there before the word though. You know what I'm saying? That was something he taught me before the word. Son, you can't control everything. Everything you're not going to be able to dictate all situations to go in the fashion that you wanted to go to. You know what I'm talking about? Because I remember I'm older than most of y'all, so some of these things I learned at about the age that y'all at. You know what I'm talking about? Remember how Uncle Greg used to always come and he'd come up and tell stuff and I'd be like, man, Uncle Greg already learned that. I'm not 16. I'm not 17. Nigga, I'm 27 years old. I'm 28 years old. A lot of things I had to learn the hard way. Some things I learned from individuals around me. Some things I learned just because dude sat me down and, and gave me some game. You know what I'm talking about? And we're like, check this out, young blood. I mean, I'm gonna, let me put you up on something. You know what I'm talking about? And I took that game they gave me and I appreciated that. But don't let fear dominate you because it'll get you. What I wanted to go, come over here to Hebrew 6, then we go to number 23. Matter of fact, make it Titus because we're closer. Titus 1 and 1. I just want y'all to hear the words of the living God now. When it comes down to trusting. This is why I was able to trust this man with every ounce of my soul. These three things that we're about to read. Titus 1 and 1. He say, Paul, a servant of God and apostle of Yahshua the Messiah, according to the faith of God's elect. You see that there? He say he's a, according to the faith of who God has chosen. According to uh, acknowledging of the truth which is after Godliness. In the hope of eternal life which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. The man say he can't lie. So let's go on over here to Hebrews 6. And we're going to go read it in the scriptures, in the law, where he said it's at. Hebrews 6. I want you to look at about verse, uh, verse 11. Listen to him now. I want y'all to listen. Listen to what he's going to tell you. He said, We desire that every one of you do show the same diligence of the full assurance of hope unto the end. And that's my same desire for each one of y'all. I want y'all to be fully assured of your faith in God all the way to the end. I want you to be fully assured of it. Because if you're not fully assured of it, it's going to be a problem. Listen to what he tell you. That you be not slothful. And that's why a lot of y'all can't get the way you want to be because you're slothful in your servitude to God. That must cease and it needs to cease tonight. We're about to start a new year. New year is in 16 days. It's in 16 days. You do not need to take in here this 13th month in this, in, in this second ADAR. You do not need to take in the A bill, the same thought process you had this year. This year that by the end, you don't need to take the same mind and thought process as you had. It's a new year coming. You need to bring a new mind with it. You need to bring a new mind with it. And that's real now. You need to bring a new mind with it. Look what else he say. But followers of them through faith and patience inherit the promises. You see how that came through by what you just mentioned? That man said through belief and patience. Because patience is a fruit of the spirit. And if you don't have any patience, you're not showing forth that you have the fruits of Making full repentance and servitude toward God. Because you've got to have some patience. People don't even realize to be a pastor, to be a preacher, you've got to have patience. You've got to be able to have patience to deal with people. 
That's why a lot of these people, you see how they be talking to people online and things of that nature. That's how you know God ain't son. They don't even know how to deal with They don't even have patience to deal with people. Like I said, I know I'm a hard man, but at the same time, I can deal with what y'all going through. I'm not cognizant or nor don't have compassion or empathy for what you, for the three of y'all who actually spoke on why your faith ain't where it's supposed to be. I understand, and then my job is effectively is to increase it. You know what I'm talking about? That's why I be telling y'all, hey, I might not be able to get the opportunity to call some of y'all on the radio, but if y'all know y'all got stuff on your mind, all y'all do is dial the number. I work for y'all. I'm here to serve y'all. How many times you done heard me say that old, that I work for the people? I work for the people, don't I? So that means I'm here to serve y'all. So that means you're not inconveniencing me by calling me and saying, hey, I got an issue. Does that mean I'm going to be able to sit down and take you through a full detailed lesson go through the book? Probably not. But I could be able to preach something to you, okay? Be able to give you some encouragement, though. I don't mean necessarily I'm going to be able to sit down and actually take you through the book. No, probably not going to be able to do that. But I can give you something, whatever the Lord give me to tell you. Because whatever I tell y'all, that's him giving it me to tell y'all that. That's just not me saying this is what I want to tell you. Look at verse 13. For when God made promise to Abraham, he could swear by no greater, he swear by himself. Saying, surely, saying, surely, blessing, I will bless thee and multiply thee, multiplying, I will multiply thee. And so after he patiently endured, he obtained the promise. This is why y'all don't able to get nothing from God, because you're not willing to endure patiently. And then we just read about taking sufferers patiently. Yahshua was able to take sufferers patiently that he could come out of his prison and reign. And y'all not willing to come and take y'all sufferers patiently so you can come out of prison and reign. That's why you're not going to make it. If you had that type of mind frame, you're not going to make it. God forbid that that should be the case. This is what he said now. For men truly swear by the greater, and an oath for confirmation is to them the end of all strife. You know what he said? That, that, he said when you make an oath, he said ain't going to be no more arguing after that. You got a lot of people, somebody actually literally take an oath, they don't want to argue after that. That man just gave me his word. So look what he said right here. Wherein God willing more abundantly to show unto the heirs of the promise, a promise the immutability of his counsel, he confirmed it by an oath. So it said God was wanting to really pretty pretty much show all those who are supposed to inherit the kingdom, all those who born of the spirit who made themselves poor. He said he really wanted to show y'all, you can trust me. He said, I speak it by an oath then. Look what say in verse 18. He said that by two immutable things in which it is impossible. It is impossible. It is impossible. It is impossible. And I'm going to tell you to you one more time. It is impossible for God to lie. So when this man tell you that he keep covenant and mercy with thousands of them that love him and keep his commandments, you can trust that. You can trust that. You can trust that. It's impossible for him to lie. Look what else he say. We might have a strong consolation. Who have fled refuge to lay hold upon the hope set before. So you should have a strong consolation in your heart that you can lay hold on to God. He got refuge for you. He got refuge. He got a place of safety for you. That's what the Noah's Ark was symbolizing. That was a place of safety. That was talking about Yahshua. Only people know about that is because uh, I don't think that got recorded. But Brittany was there for that. That was a good long while ago, wasn't it? Yeah, y'all was still in Bay Metal. That was a good, good long while ago. You know what I'm talking about? But he got a place of safety for you. And that's what we were just looking at in, in Psalm 27. Thank the Lord. He got a place of safety for you. And not just talking about dwelling in his tabernacle, but whatever you're going through, he got a place of safety. He got a place of safety. Look what else he say. Which hope we have as an anchor of the soul. That means that's to keep you rooted so you don't move. If you drop an anchor on a ship, is that ship moving? Well, you need to drop that faith down as an anchor so you don't move. Because when you lack faith, that gives Satan an opportunity to get in. That's why Peter told you resist him steadfastly in the faith. Because you got trust in God. Because if you don't trust in God, how do you think Satan wasn't able to break Job? Because Job trusted in God. Job said, I'm willing to suffer. God will reward me. I take it. He said, God give it and God take it away. God take something away from you niggas, you're going to scream and holler. Ain't none of y'all going to say thank the Lord. The Lord give us the Lord take it away. Ain't none of y'all going to say that. That's the mind you got to have. You got to have a mind of something. This thing's serious. I know a lot of y'all ain't never been taught. 
I pray the Lord let y'all be able to see how serious this thing is. I know you know. And I know he know. You know what I'm saying? But I know for y'all who babies, literally babies, literally just started, literally crawling, y'all need to know how serious this is. And really be considering to ask yourself, is this what I really want? Because if it's what y'all want, like y'all claim it is what y'all want, y'all should trust this man completely. Because like I told y'all before, having faith or trust in God is the ability to love somebody knowing they're not going to hurt you. And if y'all can give your heart over to a human being, how can you not give your heart over to God? And I'm just being real with you. And I ain't trying to be mean towards nobody who feel like their faith ain't where it's supposed to be at. But I'm just being real with you. How can you give your heart over to a man or a woman and you can't give your heart over to God? How could you be able to trust a, a person, a, a flesh and blood being, with your heart, but you can't trust God with it? Like, seriously, you need to look at that. You shouldn't have more love and trust and faith and hope in a human being than you have God. And that's real. That's real. You shouldn't have that. You shouldn't trust a man more than you trust God. No way in the world. Any of y'all disagree with that? You disagree with that? I'm just being honest with you. That ain't the That's just to be honest with you. That's to be honest with you. You need to look at that. Because I'm going to tell y'all something. That's the reason why a lot of y'all can't get the way you want to be. Because your faith ain't right. Your faith ain't right. You need to be manifesting your faith in God in your actions. you got to believe that this man is capable of doing all that he say he can do. And then some. If you can believe this man raised his son from the dead on the third day. Why y'all niggas can't believe he'll take care of y'all for obeying him? And he took care of something. Why y'all can't believe that? If you're going to sit here and you're going to tell me you believe he made the heavens and earth in seven days and made a man from dust, why y'all can't believe that he will look out for y'all? Why y'all can't believe he will not forsake you? Why y'all can't believe that? I mean, seriously. I ain't trying to be funny. I ain't trying to be mean. I want y'all to sit there and look at it. If you believe this man performed all these miraculous works, why y'all can't believe this man a light thing that this man make sure you got somewhere to stay, clothes on your back and food in your stomach? I mean, that's all you really need. What more you need than that? This man control every last one of you niggas' jaw. This man can take your jaw from y'all today and make sure you don't get enough. Is that what he want to do? What y'all going to do to stop him? Because some of y'all trust your, God, your job more than you trust God. What you going to do when he take that from you? That man can take every single solitary thing you got. What you going to do then? Some of y'all ain't going to serve no more. I guarantee it. Some of y'all going to quit. If that man did you like, like he allowed uh, what, what happened with Job, some of y'all will quit. Don't let that song, that seed that be by the wayside that you receive the word with joy, but when that tribulation persecution comes, you get offended. You don't want to follow no more. Don't let that be you. Because that referred to somebody doing a little more. Somebody got to fit in toward it. He wouldn't say it. But come on down here and let's look at this here. He said, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast. Aha, and he said, which enter into within the veil. Come on over here, number 23 and 19. Then we come over here to 2 Chronicles 15. I just said, I know I can be, uh, it be seeming like, man, this nigga just be going on, man. This nigga just be tripping. We tell you this because we love you. If I ain't love you, I wouldn't care. I wouldn't say nothing. I didn't let you burn in hell. But guess what? We persuaded the better things than that of y'all. And the things that pertain to salvation, thus we speak, because we know it. He said, God is not a man. That's the number one key thing y'all need to realize. He ain't no man. Men lie. Let's see this again. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man that he should repent. I mean, he ain't going to change his mind, man. Huh? He said, has he said, shall he not do it? Or have he spoken, shall he not make it good? Now let's see what he's spoken and see if he's going to make it good. Come on over here to exit. Make it Deuteronomy 7 now. Make it Deuteronomy 7 now. Now let's see. He said if he spoke it, he's going to make it good, right? That's what he said, right? Let's see what he spoke. Let's see if he's going to make that good. Let me get on over there. Deuteronomy 7 now. Listen to what he said. No. You need to know this. No. 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 Therefore, that Yah thy God, he is God, the faithful God. You need to know that God is faithful. 
Y'all need to know that God is faithful. And look what else he said about him. Which keep covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandment to a thousand generations. And he said he keep his covenant. He said he keep his covenant. That means he keep his word. The man is faithful. He said you need to know that Yah is the living God, that he's faithful, and he keep his word. So if you know this man is faithful and he's going to keep his word, what y'all worrying for? That's why the Lord told you, come on back here and see what the Lord told you in Matthew 6. The Lord took us in a whole other direction where we wanted to go to. We might still have to come back to this prison thing a little later on. What you say, little mother? You think we're going to have to come back to that Ecclesiastes 4 and 14 a little later on? Yeah, we're going to have to come back to it a little later on. I agree with little mother. Because we have some other things for But the Lord took us in this direction for a reason. Because I ain't going to keep y'all up too late tonight. Come on back here to Matthew 6. And I want you to look at verse 25. And I want you to listen to what this man say. Make it 24. He say, no man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and he'll love the other. Or else he will hold to one and he'll despise the other. You cannot serve God and man. Now he's talking about money. But guess what? Fear and not trusting in God to have you cleave on the things other than God won't. Better have you cleaving on the things other than God. Look what else he said. Therefore I say unto you, I want y'all to hear the man. This son I used to preach in the street all the time. And this is where I could judge a man faith at. Take no thought for your life. I done had men say we got to deal in reality. And you know what I told him? I said in reality, you don't trust God. And each and every last one of y'all need to hear that. You need to consider that. And you need to believe that. You don't need to be worried about nothing. If your man who you say you believe is your savior, who y'all get excited every time we go through the book and manifest and turn out the scripture. Even the first place where we started at, here in that Ecclesiastes 4 and 14, y'all able to see that talking about the Lord, right? And Lord permit, if it be later on in the Sabbath day, or, or if it be another time, we'll go into it more indefinitely. Obviously, tonight ain't that night. You know what I'm talking about? Because he took us in a different direction. Tonight ain't that night. And I thank the Lord. That's what I be telling you. Don't y'all never ask me what we going to go over. Because I don't never know. Because it wasn't my intention to be dealing with completely what we're dealing with tonight. But the Lord do as he will. And I bless the Father in the name of y'all sure for it. Let his will be done. But y'all need to sit there and consider that. Stop worrying about your life. Now I'm not telling you to be no old sorry, no good nigga. And not do what you got to do. But don't be worrying about nothing. Listen to what else he said. He said, take no thought for your life. What you shall eat, what you shall drink, nor yet for your body, and what you shall put on is not life more than the rain, life more than meat, and the body than raiment. Your life more than what you eat. Your life more than what you wear. Your life more than where you work at. Your life is more than a paycheck. It's worth way much more than that. Matter of fact, hold this here and come on over here to Proverbs 23. Ah, oh, something just came in my mind. I gotta remember where it's at. Proverbs twenty-three and about verse four. Ah, oh, there it is. There it is, right there on, on the head. Thank the Lord. He said, Labor not to be rich. Cease from thy own wisdom. Wilt thou set thy eyes upon that which is not? For riches certainly make themselves wing, and they fly away as an eagle towards heaven. So he said, you, you need to be sitting and setting your mind on the things of this life. Hold what you got to come on here to Colossians 3. And we're going to come back over here to Proverbs 24 in a minute. But come on over here to Colossians 3 and 1. I thank the Lord. See, now this is going back to if y'all are going to die, this is what y'all need to be thinking about. Colossians 3 and 1. He says, If you therefore be risen with the Messiah, seek those things which are above where the Messiah sit on the right hand of God. Set your affections on the things above and not on the things of the earth. For ye are dead and your life is hid with the Messiah and God. When the Messiah, who is our life, shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. This is why you need to have your mind set on things in heaven, because this man is your life. Matter of fact, come on over here, hold this here before we get to this Proverbs 24. Hold it, Matthew 6. Come on over here to Deuteronomy 32. Praise the Lord. Let's go on over here to the law. Lord willing, this help somebody out this evening. Deuteronomy 32. Make it verse 46. Praise the Lord. Deuteronomy 32 and 46. Listen to what the man says. 
He said, he said unto them, set your heart unto all the words which I testify among you this day, which you shall command your children to observe and do all the words of this law. Then we just read Paul just pretty much so you that same pattern. You need to set your mind on the words of God. Set your mind on Yahshua. Sure. That's where you need to set your mind at. Not worrying about is this going to happen and what, what about this and what about that. you got to be able to put your foot out there. Matter of fact, I'm going to show you something else on that. Look at verse 47. For it is not a vain thing for you. This is not worthless. Because it is your life. Remember, the Messiah is your life. It's not a vain thing for you to set your mind on. Y'all see the correlation between the You see how we can go to the scriptures and validate every epistle letter this man writes. That we can go to the scriptures and see something to see why he said what he said. And now we have to sit back and look at this. Is that Paul is telling us the same thing Moses told us. Set your mind on the word. It's your life. That's why the master was telling you, don't worry about none of this stuff. That's not your life. We Jews, we ain't worried about none of, that, none of that stuff. The nations, the Gentiles seek after all this stuff. We Jews, we're supposed to be serving this man in spirit and truth, doing what's, God, what's good and what's right and truth before y'all are God. See that. It's a light thing for this man to get you a job. It's a light thing for this man to get you somewhere to stay. It's a light thing for this man to get you food and clothing. Y'all got to sit here and look at this here. Because some of us, we done already discussed this here. If the Lord done put it in your mind that you need to be down here for the word, are you not seeking him? And if you're seeking him, the man just tell you in Hebrews 11, he's a rewarder of those that diligently seek him. He ain't coming down here for me. He ain't coming down here to hang out. You coming down here to save your soul. You coming down here because God said you need to get where I'm. Matter of fact, hold what you got. Come on over here to, uh, to John 12. It was something else I just called for. I get to it. He'll bring it. Oh, it's Genesis 12. I ain't called for it. It just hit my mind. Come over here to John 12. Then I'll show you the correlation of the scripture to it. And then I'll take you to the law. And you see the whole thing. I done showed some of y'all this before. I'm going to show it to you again. Some of y'all ain't never heard it. Some of you, matter of fact, the only person who had heard it is Brittany. So the rest of y'all ain't never heard it. Come on over here to John 12 and by verse 24. Make it 25. Matter of fact, make it 24. It all good. It's all going to say the same thing. Come on with it. Say, truly, truly, I say unto you, except the corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, to abide alone. But if it die, bring forth much fruit. You're going to have to be able to die to come out of that prison now so you can reign. You're going to have to be able to suffer. You're going to be able to have to give yourself up. Look what he say. He that love his life shall lose it, and he that hate his life in this world shall keep it under life eternal. If any man serve me, if any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am. He didn't say what Dwayne Bonton is. He didn't say none of that there. He said what he is. There shall also my servant be. And if any man serve me, him will my father honor. So you got to look at this here. Wherever the Lord is, that's where you ought to want to be. Like I told you, the congregation my sister go to, it's a woman there. She moved from the Netherlands. The Netherlands. Me talking about touch moving from another state. This woman moved from another hemisphere. Because she said, I got to be where the Lord is. Come on over here to this 1 Samuel 12. That's what you got to look at. That wherever the Lord is, that's where you ought to want to be. Because that's how I feel. Wherever the Lord want me to be at, that's where I'm going. It ain't 1 Samuel 12. Pardon me, y'all. It might be 2 Samuel 12. That's where I'm going to be. That's just me. Now, I know I had Mark a long time ago. And I just read over this the other day. Y'all give me a second. This is where it goes. You can say Itai. Where you at, Itai? Now, I'm going to go way too far. I'll give you one second, please. I want you to hear word for word, step for step. It's in Samuel, though. And I think it's 2 Samuel, what I'm looking for. Yeah, it is. 2 Samuel 15. Pardon me for that. 2 Samuel 15, about verse 14. Fifteen and fourteen. Second Samuel fifteen and fourteen. 
He said, David said unto all his servants that were with him at Jerusalem, Arise and let us flee. For we shall not else escape from Absalom, make speed to depart, lest he overtake us suddenly and bring evil upon us, and smite the city with the edge of the sword. The king's servants said unto the king, Behold, the thy servants are ready to do whatsoever my lord the king shall appoint. And the king went forth and all, and it, and all his household after him. And the king left ten women which were concubines to keep the house. The king went forth and all the people after him tarried in the place that was far off. And all his servants passed on beside him. And all the Shetherites and the Pedalites and the Gittites and six hundred men which came after him from Gath passed on before the king. Then said the king to Ittai the Gittite, Wherefore goest thou also with us? Return to thy place and abide with the king, for thou art a stranger and also an exile. Whereas thou came but yesterday, should I this day make thee go up and down with us, seeing I go with I may return thou? Take back thy brethren, and mercy and truth be with thee. And Ittai answered the king and said, As y'all live. So this man just swore. Did he say, uh, oh, uh, oh, end all strife, right? He's saying, as, the, as my lord the king lived, surely in what place my lord the king shall be, whether in death or life, even there also will thy servant be. And y'all need to look at that. He said, whether I'm living or whether I'm dead, I'm going to be where the Lord be at. See, now come on on back over here and let's look at, uh, I think it's Ephesians 1. We get to Genesis 12 in a minute. Because he said, whether in death or life, I'm going to be where the Lord at. Now y'all got to sit there and look at that. He just sold the pattern of what we read in John 12. He said, whether my king at, that's where I'm going to be. He said, specifically, your servant going to be where you at. Y'all got to sit there and look at it. Are you going to be where the Lord at? Because sometimes the places that we want to go, the Lord ain't there. And he, Philippians 1, pardon me. And he's telling you to get hit and come unto me and y'all be dragging your feet. Because you worrying about this, that, that, and the other. And the man going to make it happen. Philippians 1 and by verse 21. Make it 20, I should say. Make it 19. He said, For I know that this shall turn to my salvation through prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Yahshua the Messiah. And y'all need to look at it. Whatever you're going to go through, it's going to be for your salvation if it's according to God's will. Because that's what he means about separating y'all unto the gospel. And that means you might have to separate yourself from places you're going to have to move in. Because that's what Ittai was just saying. I'm separated unto God. i got to go with the king. That's what the Lord was telling you in John 12. If any man come after me, he's going to follow me and be where I'm at, which means you're going to separate yourself unto the gospel. You're going to be where God is. Look what he said. He said, according to my earnest expectation, expectation and my hope, that in nothing I shall be ashamed. That's what y'all need to keep saying you need to remember. The scriptures tell you that, that he that believe on the Messiah shall not be ashamed. Your earnest expectation and hope need to be in God, knowing that God will not leave you ashamed for trusting in him. But remember, he's not a man that he should lie. It's impossible. It's impossible. And you need to know that he's a faithful God. And that he keep his word. Look what else he said. He said, but that with all boldness as always, so now also the Messiah shall be magnified in my body, whether it be by life or by death. Because then we just hear it say, whether I be dead or whether I be alive, I'm going to be with the king. Well, y'all need to sit there and look at that. That whether you live or whether you die, that you magnify this man. And that you be where he is. See, that's going back to what? Those who were born of him are poor. Him. That means you was willing to die to the flesh. Because didn't he say, he that hated him, he said, except the corn of wheat fall into the ground and it abide alone. But if it die, it brings, you see how the Lord tied all this stuff back in together. Is y'all catching how this man making this thing seamlessly fit together? I thank the Lord. If you don't see it, I don't know what to tell you. He said, for me to live is the Messiah and to die is gain. But if I live in the flesh, this is the fruit of my labor, yet what I shall choose, I won't not. He said, for I'm straight betwixt the two, having a desire to depart and to be with the Messiah, which is far better. Because if you die with him, that means you dwelling in him, he's going to raise you from the dead. Because sometimes it'd be hard to walk in this flesh, and you'd be ready to depart. I know a lot of y'all ain't ready to depart because you ain't got the spirit yet. And I understand. Don't make no sense to want to leave here, you ain't been sealed to it. You know what I'm talking about? But it could be like that sometimes. Well, you feel like what? It don't make no difference whether I'm alive or dead. I'm with the Lord. I'm ready to go. Well, y'all got to sit there and be able to. If you get sealed, then you can feel the same way, don't you? That if I'm alive or dead, I'm gonna be with the Lord. But y'all got to look at this here. When this man is telling you to move, he's telling you to do it for a reason. He's trying to separate you under him, and a lot of y'all ain't willing to separate. Y'all, y'all get comfortable with stuff, and you want to be in comfortable surroundings, around comfortable things, and that's not going to allow you to be saved. 
So when you want to be comfortable and you want to be relaxed and you want to be easy, you're not going to suffer, you're not going to learn obedience, and you're going to go to hell. It's simple as that. I ain't never seen nobody make something happen that was comfortable. Have you? Have you ever seen people that do things when they're not comfortable and they got to move and stay focused, they can make something happen to them? So you know what happens with comfort comfortability with things? It's complacency. And you know what happens with complacency? Sloppiness. Because you know what happens with complacency? You feel like you arrived. You know what I'm talking about? You feel like I'm where I need to be. I'm good. I'm hearing the word. I'm doing this. But you ain't where you need to be. You don't got complacent, man. And can I tell you, you gonna fall, you get complacent. Can't never get complacent. I thank the Lord he ain't allowed that to creep into my mind to where I thought I was complacent. You know what I'm saying? To where I thought, okay, it's something else I need to you know what I'm talking about? I, just, I, think that, I thank the Lord for that. Because it ain't nobody for him but him that ain't allowed that to happen. Because I done seen dudes that I know, they got complacent. Which means you get stagnated. We have no time for stagnation. You ever been around some stagnated water? Man, stagnated water breaks a smell that's just straight horrible. And you know what, what, what breeds in stagnated water? At least down south here in Florida, you know what breeds in stagnated water? Huh? No, mosquitoes. And you know what mosquitoes are? They blood sucks. Parasites. You know what I'm talking about? And that's what's going to happen. You around here stagnating in the world. You ain't going to do nothing but be a parasite and suck the righteousness out of somebody else. Y'all just consider that now. Come on back over here to, uh, to the Genesis 12. We come back to Matthew 6 in a minute. I want you to look what he told Abraham. Genesis 12 and 1. It says, Now Yah said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. Now this man sat there and told you, you need to leave everything, and you need to be where I'm at, didn't you? Because he said the land, look what he told him. He said, I will make thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and I will make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. So man, this man just told this man, wherever I tell you to go at, that's where I'm going to bless you at, because that's what I'm going to be at. And see, a lot of times we want to stay in the places where we at because we're looking for God to bless us in this place. When he told you, I ain't going to bless you here. I told you to go here. I'm going to bless you there. You know what I'm talking about? Because we already know if we had to pack up a moolah muffin, you think we ain't going to leave? You know what I'm talking about? And guess what it is? Everybody going to leave, ain't it? Wherever the Lord tells us to go, that's where we're going at. We're not beholding the Jacksonville floor. It's just this way he wants us to be to do their work. But if he wants us to move, you think we ain't going to move? If he, I'm trying to tell you, if he wanted us to go to the West Coast, Midwest, East Coast, I'm talking about somewhere else in the South, somewhere else in the state, that's what we're going to do because we want to be where he at. We don't want to be where we want to be at. We want to be where he at. Because wherever he at, that's where the blessing going to be. The blessing ain't going to be where you want it to be at. It's going to be where God directs you to go at. And the reason why Abraham was able to get up and leave because he trusted God then. You know what I'm talking about? That's what I that's why I mentioned that when I told him. And that's what the man told you to go. Go. You know what I'm talking about? Go. Don't hesitate with it. Just go. He'll work all that out later. You know what I'm talking about? Don't worry about, well, I want this to have this. I want to have this. I want to have that. Just go. And I done told some of y'all that before. A lot of Israelites, they always say, man, I'm in a place, man, there's nobody for me to fellowship with. Well, then, nigga, you need to leave then. It don't make no sense to sit up there and be like, I feel like this man here got the word and God with it, and you're going to stay where you at. That means the word is not of utmost importance to you. Come tell me, if I ain't have to preach, if the man ain't send me to preach, well, whatever, I'm out of here. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, he got it. Well, I got to get that in. It don't make no sense for me to stay here. See, a lot of y'all used to it because y'all used to people from going from church to church in your city. You ain't never met a lot of people who say, oh, I moved from such and such to get this word. See, when you know you're willing to get up and go do something for God, that means that's the most serious thing in the world to you. That's how y'all need to look at this. Look what else he told. He said, I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. So Abram departed. You see the key thing what Abraham did? He left. He left. And y'all had spoken, and as y'all had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him, and Abraham was 75 years old when he departed out of You see what he said? Just like God told me to do, he did it. 
Now, sometimes y'all be looking for God to audibly speak something to you, but sometimes he put matters in your heart to tell you what to do, and you're not listening. Because he said where his servants is, that's what where he is, his servants going to be. So you got to ask yourself, if you a servant of God, why are you not where he is? Okay, so this is not the only congregation of the living God in, the, in North America, in the lower 48. You know what I'm talking about? There are others. They might not be numerous. You might not know all of them, but I guarantee you it's made up of people that all of them ain't from the city where it's at. Because they say, I want to be a servant of God. I got to get where he at, and I'm willing to go through and suffer whatever that I got to suffer to get my soul saved. And y'all got to look at that. How many of y'all have God told you to leave from everybody you know and everywhere you live and everything you ever knew? Y'all would get up and go. Let's just be honest with you. I'm talking about anybody willing to answer. Anybody got the, uh, that got the, 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 the wherewithal and the fortitude to just be honest and answer that question. How many of y'all would get up and leave everything you ever known and everybody you ever known just because God told you to do it? How many of y'all willing, willing to do that? Any of y'all willing to do that? You know what I'm talking about? See, that's just, and, I, and I respect that though. But guess what? Abraham didn't show no hesitancy, did it? You know why? Because he believed God. He believed God and he trusted in him. Because this man said he had told you, go to where I'm telling you to go at. I'm going to bless you. He said, I'm going to bless you. Because he said, well, you going, I'm going to be there. So y'all got to look at this here. When this man tell you in his word that he going to perform certain things, believe it. The only people who don't believe God and don't trust in what this man telling him to do are sinners. Because being unbelieving is to be a sinner. Matter of fact, come on with you so y'all can know that. Come on over here to James. No, it's not James. It's Romans 14, 23. We get back over here to Matthew 6. Come on over here to Romans 14, 23. Make it verse 22. Listen to what this man about to tell y'all. Romans 14, 22. Hast thou faith? Have it to thyself before God. Happy is he that condemned not himself in that thing which he allowed. He's saying he that doubt is damned if he eat because he eat not of faith. For whatsoever is not of faith is sin. So when you see, now y'all need to sit there and look at that. You could, didn't I tell y'all earlier you breaking the first commandment when you don't have faith? Now the man, the book just got you. So now you need to sit there and look at that. What this man say, whatever you do, if it's not a faith, you have transgressed the law. And that Deuteronomy 6. Love ye y'all with all your heart, all your soul, and all your might. Y'all need to look at that. He said, if you're around here doubting, you're damning yourself. Don't damn yourself. Why? Cast that fear to the side. Cast that doubt to the side. Cast that indecision to the side. It's not going to be profitable to you. I know it might be hard. I know it'd be like this here. Well, what about this? Get rid of it all. You got to know. We just read it in the law. He is the faithful God. He said, You need to know. He just didn't say, I am. He said, No. Know it. Believe it. Trust it. I'm faithful. I keep my word. Did he not keep his word to Abraham? Did he not bless Abraham in the place he told him to go? Did he not bless Yahshua by raising him up out of that grave so he could reign? Did he not do that? Where anywhere in this word did this man word, did this man promise fail? Whether it was for good or whether it was for evil. When did this man word fail? It never failed. Consider that. Hear that. Wait at. Know your God. Know who you serve. Just don't let this thing be no social club or no conversation piece. Know who you serve. We Jews, we supposed to be true worshipers. The man say, I seek those who serve me in spirit and truth. That's what he desires. You can't get the spirit but by faith. You can't get it but by faith. A full, whole, total confidence, trust, and giving thyself over to the living God. That's the only way you're going to get it. I know it might seem hard to you at the first. 
But you got to look at this here. God is not going to move in your favor until you trust him. He can't do nothing with you. Now, he knows some of y'all, he's showing certain stuff to you, making things happen, because he know that you do. You just got to get over your trepidation. Come on over here to Proverbs 24, what I call for. We come on back to Matthew 6, because it's going to tie in the sun right with the Lord from the sun. When we get back over here to Matthew, I thank the Lord. I thought we were just going to go knee deep and showing y'all something or something else, but the Lord said, I got to get y'all mind stayed on me tonight. Amen. Thank the Lord. Did it help you out tonight, little mother? You need something like this here, or you was all right? It helps. We're praying the Lord. It can always help. Even the stuff we already knew. No, I'm talking a little mother. Who that was? That, who that was? Brittany. Hey, everybody needs it. Because a lot of y'all need to tighten up. You need to tighten up. And when I... You know what I'm talking about? Because, uh... I say, we go in. And I won't be trying to be mean, but the Lord is not playing because he can't do nothing. Remember, we read it last week. If you're fearful and unbelieving, you're going in a lake. He can't do nothing with you. I'm going to put it to you in the simplest term. Little Muffin have heard me say that many times before. When now one of y'all went, deal with no man that you did not trust and that you did not believe. You wouldn't have nothing to do with it. You wouldn't have nothing to do with it. And if you did have something to do with it, it's because you was an idiot. Because you try to convince yourself to trust and believe somebody you know is not trustworthy. It's the same flip side with a man. Ain't none of you men going to deal with no woman you don't trust nor believe. Because ain't nothing worse than a woman who, well, I'm talking about a man who can't keep his word in one thing, but ain't nothing but a woman who ain't trustworthy. Because you know she's doing just like our biggest said back in the day. She's spread like mustard. You know what I'm talking about? Don't nobody want no woman they can't trust. That's why the book say a virtuous woman. He said a husband heart can rest safely with her then. You know what I'm talking about? So if you know in a natural sense that you're not going to have no dealings with somebody you don't trust and believe, why do you think God going to have some dealings with you and you don't trust and believe him? Why do you think he's going to do that? I mean, let's just be honest, man. Why do you think he's going to do that? Come on over here to this Proverbs 24 and let's look at verse 10. That's all we came here for, verse 10. Look what he said. He said, if thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. Some of y'all, when that tribulation and, and persecution come, y'all going to faint because you ain't got no faith. Come on over here to Matthew 6. That's why you're going to faint because you ain't got no faith. Because remember, the strength of y'all is everlasting. The, the trust in y'all is everlasting strength, ain't it? I mean, you ain't got no faith. That's why you're going to faint. That's why the Lord ain't even began to take, take y'all through nothing because some of you niggas going to faint. Come on back over here. Where we at? We in verse 20, uh, 26, ain't little mother? Yeah, that's where we at. He said, Behold, the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather in the barn. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are ye not much better than that? How many times y'all done seen Lord just move somebody come out there and drop some bread on the ground for them birds, ain't it? Them birds get something to eat every day. And you niggas don't think you're greater than the bird, and y'all worrying about, if I leave, am I going to have somewhere to stay? Or how I'm going to pay this bill if you ain't left yet? You know what I'm talking about? You worry about all that and y'all don't think y'all better than birds when this man say he made his son in his express image? So therefore we could be made in that same express image? And that he gave us something that no animal could get, which is the gift of his divine nature and eternal life? And you don't think you better than a bird? Man, I tell you, I feed animals. I feed animals. You think I ain't going to feed my children? Some of y'all got kids. Y'all knew y'all going to feed y'all children. They ain't got to ask you for nothing to eat. They might come and tell you I'm hungry. But nigga, I already know you're hungry. I don't want fancy. I know the last time you eat. Nigga, Stanky ain't never got to tell you to go. You should truth be told. Him. Stanky should never be hungry. She try to eat everything in sight. Anything anybody got. You know what I'm talking about? But y'all feed up. Let's look at the next verse here. He said, which one, he said, which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? And the Lord said in another verse, I think it's in Luke, he said, if you can't take add to the least, what you taking thought for everything else for? Can't now one of y'all plotting a plan and nothing in your mind add not now dollar to your bank account. He said, which one of y'all by taking thought can add one, which one of y'all by thinking can add something to yourself? That's why the man said, if you can't add to the least, what you thinking about everything else for? What you worried about it for? 
what else he say? He say, why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Look what else you say. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast in the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? You see, Lord, it's not only people doing Say, y'all ain't got no faith. Y'all ain't got no faith. And some of y'all ain't got no faith. And now the man is sitting here castigating you and chastising you on that purpose, because now you're in violation. You committed sin. You ain't got no faith. You doubting him. You doubting him. But I thank the Lord that y'all say, hey, help me out with my unbelief, like the man said who warned his son here. He said, help me out with my unbelief. And all this coming down to it, stop doubting God. And when y'all begin to stop doubting God, guess what? Your servitude towards God will get up exponentially better. Wouldn't you agree, Lamar? I would say once you begin to stop doubting this man and put your trust in him, your sir, you won't slack on something you know you're supposed to did two, three weeks ago and you still ain't did it yet. You're not going to be like you was fashioning yourself according, uh, uh, to going after your lust in your form of ignorance like, you, like some of y'all been doing. You know what I'm talking about? Knowing you didn't know, you ain't know no better. You did it. Now you know better. You're still doing it. You still want to go after it. You're still seeking for it. You're just plain flat out stupid. You know what I'm talking about? Because now you know better. Because there's a difference when you didn't know. But when you know better and you go do it, you are stupid. That's why the Lord say, how long you going to love simplicity, you simple ones? How long you going to be stupid? And we don't even sit to thank the Lord to talk to you, look you right in your face. You's a dumb nigga. Sometimes we really need somebody to look us in the face and tell us. Because a lot of times people want to be coddled. You know what I'm talking about? But sometimes you need somebody to look you right in your face, look you square in your eye and tell you you's a stupid, retarded, dumb nigga. Like your frame of thinking, your ways of doing you is a dumb because maybe it'll make something in your heart make you feel bad. Maybe you don't want to be stupid no more. You know what I'm talking about? Then we just read that last week by not wanting to be stupid no more. I don't recall. I think we looked at something along the lines. You know what I'm talking about? How many of y'all still want to be stupid? Anybody, any, any one of y'all still want to be stupid? Please let me know. Who want to be stupid? Let's just be honest. Now let's just be honest. Hey, amen. Now let's just be honest with it. In the last 90 days, I'm talking about in the last 90 days, how many of y'all going to be honest enough to bear witness before the congregation that y'all been stupid? Who going to be honest enough to do it? You've been stupid in the last 90 days. Praise the Lord. Now I'm talking about, when I say being stupid, I'm talking about knowingly doing something you know you ain't supposed to go do. Now you might have did some things that ain't make no sense. But I know you ain't went out here and did nothing stupid. Who else would that? Who that, that were buried? That were wrong? Say they done did something stupid in the last nine days. Because I'm like to say, because I already told you, Barry already admitted before we came on. He said, "Hey, I've been doing some stupid stuff the last couple of weeks." I can. Like this here. So you just sit there and know that. Now, how long you gonna be stupid? Because the Lord still see fit in His mercy to keep you. Rolling with him. To not sever you from him. And he's sitting here steadily warning y'all. Stop being stupid. That's the love. That's the love of God right there. Ain't it? it should have been old. should have been old about three, four months ago. You know what I'm talking about? So we have to sit there and look at that now. How long am I going to be stupid? Because like I said, because the Lord loves you. And he ain't loved none of y'all. Guess what he'd have been done did? He'd have been done savage with him. He'd be like, he said, we ain't messing that nigga no more. That nigga's done. You know what I'm talking about? So you got to look at this here. This man gave you an opportunity to get your tail whooped so you get it together. So you get it together. So you get it together. Like I said, because look up, you already know. You must, you know I would much rather preach about some other stuff, don't I? What I used to look Marie in the face tell all the time. What I look like preaching to you about all the riches and mercies and glories of God and inheritance of God and everybody sitting in your apartment is a is a disobedient, rotten, no good sinner. Ain't none of y'all going to get it. You know what I'm talking about? Ain't none of y'all going to get it. It don't make no sense for me to sit in here and preach to y'all about something you're not going to receive. Don't make no sense for me to do it. 
You know what I'm talking about? I would much rather, but like this here, the reason why the Lord the last few weeks been giving some of these things like this here, going across your head, because he know nigga been doing stuff, you ain't got no business. And he knows who it is. I appreciate y'all being honest enough to admit it. He never got to go in no specific unless it called for you to go in specific. You know what I'm talking about? Because there's a lot of stuff he want. Like I said, I want to really go off into this, this ecclesiastic. I had some stuff online. You know what I'm talking about, little fuck? Lord said, no, we got to go somewhere else. We got to go somewhere else. Because y'all got to get it together now. I do this because I love y'all. You know what I'm saying? I could be in the bed sleep right now. You know what I'm talking about? We could be in Georgia right now and say we just leave another congregation if I ain't had to preach them. We could be right this here, be with Nail, everybody chilling, we going to get something to eat right about now. But guess what? The Lord saw fit to say, I'm going to take this old big head nigga from Duval County. I'm going to give my word. I'm going to send him to, to preach their word. And I hope that it touch these certain individuals. Everybody that's on this line, they might say they saw. You think this is by coincidence? Okay, little Muffin, okay, that's my sister. You know what I'm talking about? Like I say, 23 years ago this day, she came into the earth by the grace of God. This is this a hug. I ain't know until I got out of prison. The rest of y'all, other than Glover, I met Glover for a job I ain't had before a couple months. I met Barry through somebody we met because of the word. Somebody that because of her having to deal with a certain individual who we don't deal with no more, he said he was standing up here, he said he wanted somebody that he could sit down and fellowship with. Now he rolling with. That ain't nobody but the Lord. Because the individual who's son around there, they don't sit around here with us. And they stay right up the street. I'm talking about literally, I can walk there and be there in less than 30 minutes. In the car, less than 10. I'm talking about 7 minutes top, maybe 5. But I'm talking about, I can literally walk and be to her front door in less than 30 minutes. Easy, on foot. That's how close this woman is. And the woman whose son I don't roll with her. You got to look at that, Barry. That wasn't for no reason. That wasn't for no reason. Because it could be the Lord trying to separate you unto the gospel to save your soul. That wasn't for no reason. When you look at the rest of y'all, it's because of a social media website that y'all sitting here and this man is soft fit to give you an opportunity to hear this word. Like straight up and down. So we got to sit there and look at that. And then my brother Pell, we grew up together. We're in school together. And it's because of this, this social media site. My homeboy told me, man, I've seen Fat Boy Pell be on Facebook, this, that, that, and all. Boom, there it is. The Lord see fit to bring certain people at a certain time. Look, I just said, I don't know if Nell ever told you. Nell was like this here. She told me this here, man. She was like, I think he had me meet your cousin for this sad call. You know what I'm talking about? He had, he didn't have Nell just one of my cousin working. I think Bank of America, wherever they were working at, just because he just wanted to be friends. I'm sitting in the jail. I'm sitting in the prison behind a razor wire fence. Ain't even thinking about no work. Not knowing everything that man was doing when it came down to that was for the sole purpose of us be doing what we're doing right now. Because if it wasn't for that happening, then I wouldn't have met Kane Crosser. We would have never been talking about the word for all that period of time. She would have never been taught and then for her to go that way. Because she done told me it's a lot of stuff she was like, I don't be wanting to say something because I already be knowing it. And it don't necessarily mean because I taught it to her. You know what I'm talking about? But, it's, you know, Nell's a reader. You know what I'm talking about? So it's a lot of information. Like for the average person who joined that congregation, I know she was light years ahead of her. You know what I'm talking about? Light years ahead of her. She just wasn't coming in, oh, I just heard of seeing a couple's live stream. She was already thinking she had already known. Whether she heard it from me, or whether she heard it from him on the street, or whether she learned it on her own volition. You know what I'm talking about? So you have to sit there and look at that. None of this is by accident. None of this is by accident. Let me finish this verse and I'm going to let y'all go. Look me out in here in verse 31. He said, therefore, take no thought saying what we shall eat or what we shall drink. Wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles see. Y'all need to know that now. That's why he told you don't envy your oppressor and choose none of their way. That's what the nations see. We do. We don't seek that. We seek God. He said, for your heavenly father know that you need have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. I say, blessed be God in the name of Yahshua for a word. We're going to stop it right there. This walk is going through the book.